Hello everyone, welcome back to Asian Cash, which of course is a channel that does make videos sometimes, occasionally these days. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing a hobby hangout and we're going to be doing lots of painting. So we are going, well I say lots, I mean not speaking on my behalf, but I'm seeing everyone else taking part, we'll be doing lots of painting. Um, <laughs> and speaking of those people, we have got Christian from Dice Saga, so how are you doing today? Um, all good, thanks for having us on yes again. So it's been a while since we've done a hobby hangout together. Uh, but it has, mate. Uh -huh. It has. But the thing is, today I will be painting not Warhammer, but something from Marvel United from a game board. Um, board that game was Christian, today. everyone. So thank you for him for coming on. Uh, that was very good. If you didn't notice, it was a Warhammer channel. Oh, no, look, at that. look, at oh, shut up. look at it. <laughs> That's very cool. Very cool. What, who is that? What hero? Or so that's Storm. Storm. From the X-Men. Yes. I know they're connected. Um, they're very cool. Very you should cool. Be, anyway. Anyways. And uh, we've also got Luke joining us, uh, who is Picard from the Discord, who also may be known as Arcan. Um, so if you're I in the Discord, by many names. Is, goes by many names, also Tim. Uh, <laughs> and with that, we also have uh, myself, obviously, being part of this. And I'm going to be painting some gloom by Gits, and I'm going to be painting a Loom Boss, which I kind of really need to have painted, you know, in the next hour so we'll see how that goes <laughs> and when i enter this in a painting competition tomorrow if anyone asks me i will be telling them this took 30 hours to paint so that's that and we also have uh yasmin joining us hi <laughs> how are you doing good yeah i'm starting my battle on us this year so <laughs> i'm cracking with my nurgle army very good so we'll do a lot of new year new army although christian just said something very much against that well, yeah. That's fine. Sometimes so you need to do a purge, you know. <laughs> new year, new game. New year, new game. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. New year, new, year, new year, board games. <laughs> um, right, so that's that. Also, part I just want to say the Loom Boss I'm painting, like in the next hour, like yellow is going to be one of the primary colours in this, so that'll be fun. Um, but we've also got Christian in the chat saying, hi, guys. Hi, mate. Hope you're doing well. What are you you're painting? Well. Also, anyone else who's watching this, let me know what you're working on. Put it in the chat. It'd be great to hear. And as I, you know, haven't done a video for a while, I certainly haven't done a live video for a while. Um, it's very good to hear your guys' thoughts and what you guys been up to. As much as I haven't had time to do this, I'm still very keen to hear what everyone is getting on. And on that note, very nice to have everyone here doing this hobby hangout. I thought it'd be nice bit of a surprise. I think I said it today. I think <laughs> I asked people. They like to join. And people did. So it's very, very kind. Um, and I'm also going to be using a wet palette, which is something a recent thing I've started using, which is absolutely fantastic. And I realize I'm being very animated with my hands and stuff, and I need to put my hands to better use and move them in the air and actually paint a model. Um, so we're going to start with what color should we have this loom boss then? So it's going to be yellow. Purple. Purple. Ooh. We'll have purple on there. Well, we'll have a yellow on purple, then the other complementary color to that would be green. Good. No one no. said white so far. That's fine. <laughs> So uh, if you've got yellow and purple, you white. either go blue or red. Blue or red white. Is... Yeah. Actually, um, hang on, yeah. What's the most difficult colours to paint? So we need black, white. yellow, yeah. white. Yeah. Um, purple yeah. is quite on the on the scale, yeah. Well, the uh troll that I'm gonna be painting up for the channel uh, at some point is going to be uh, white and potentially yellow so that'll be a, a great combination but unlike this model is already sprayed white so it does kind of help me there uh, to be so... fair I've, I've kind of gotten over my fear of painting white like you paint enough white storm casts and you know yeah it's not when someone jabs you in the arm the needle enough you just sort of get used to the pain don't you yeah <laughs> i've never attempted and i don't think i will if i like a whole army no i'm good i thought you made the needles <laughs> All right, no, uh, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so yeah, a whole army is awful. Don't paint white, but if you watch my how to paint a white troll video, definitely paint it. Uh, that, is, <laughs> that is definitely the, the selling point for that video. Um, yes, so that is that. And how has everyone's hobby been going? Any games been played lately? No, yes, so yes, myself okay. and Matt had a game last night. We actually streamed it on Instagram for the very first time, which was odd as well. But very cool. Yeah, it's actually it's quite fun though. It's a, I use my ogres and Matt used Stormcast. 
it was first game of 2022 and we've not played for like four months so yeah mm-hmm. the rules were rusty <laughs> oh, yeah. like remembering pretty much anything and everything and but you know it's a good laugh we had a good time and yeah it's uh gonna form part of our campaign which is pretty cool oh, very nice and yeah. um how was it streaming on instagram compared to the usual uh youtube yeah uh, it was fine it was just i think it's just i've not really streamed whilst actually playing the game ever so yeah. if i found very quickly that you can't do both very well in terms oh, of hard, isn't it? <laughs> yeah I, i've i've tried doing that before and i think anyway, anyone who's watching this video can attest that i shouldn't do it again um <laughs> especially when you're trying to move two thousand points of, of an army around the table oh, oh yeah i was about 1400 yeah i think the best way to do something like that is to probably do along the lines of um just just have it as like a, a hobby hangout have the camera pointing down at your your board game your silver tower whatever it is you're playing and just just relax really yeah um, but the benefit of doing live videos as you are aware uh christian is that the editing is fantastic yeah that's <laughs> very much so it's, yeah, very... so it's something we will look to do more of it's just i think now Obviously, Sarah is part of uh, Dice Saga as well. So I think with the three of us, what we could do is two of us have a game and the third person talk to chat, hang out, have a laugh, obviously interact with the, obviously with those guys playing it. And then, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, that's, kind of fun. I think that's a good idea. Whereas um, otherwise, what you do is, like myself, who when I engage with the chat, when I do a live battle report, it'd be every, every 20 minutes. Hello, how's everyone doing? Oh, they've gone now. <laughs> <laughs> someone asked the question is, is anyone still there <laughs> someone asked the question of like what what are the dragon attacks oh the dragon died 10 minutes ago so that's that's no longer relevant yeah <laughs> that's why you'll need a penny if anybody understands that right <laughs> so, yeah, that, that only relies on you watching a certain channel but yeah. yeah i say i didn't get the reference if i'm honest what what's a penny it's it's from midwinter minis yeah, Minzo to Minis um, is a is a man called Guy, yeah. um, and he has a wife called Penny, and she's sort of like his sits there and reads the chat while he sit, does reads things. Reads the chat, d- like deals with things that sort of thing. Uh, I've got to get my wife to do that. That'd be fun. See, so, so That's the, what I'm working on right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's there's definitely going to be a win there, isn't there, somewhere? Chris says married. he's working on Stormcast Vanquishers. Oh, nice. I'm working on Stormcast, and even I can't remember what Vanquishers are. <laughs> Vanquishers are the, um, I believe they vanquish the enemy, don't they? Uh, they don't yeah. prosecute the enemy, and they don't liberate the... Um, oh, the, uh, they're one of the paladin units. Okay. Yeah, it's, oh, get with the system. Get with the program. Oh. My brain was like, are they the ones... But no, those are paladors. I was like... I don't. Know, I get confused. Too many of them. Well, uh, Seventy-seven the different Ecuador's? things to buy just on the website for. Uh, I'm still too new to all of this. <laughs> it's, it's it's shiny metal boys. Don't yeah. worry. I've been doing it for six years, and I still can't remember which ones those are. Um, <laughs> but right, right. I'm sure. Are they the new ones? Are they? Uh, yellow no. is hard over black. And the spray. Oh, mate. Yellow is incredibly hard. I remember when I painted my first ever iron jaws, and I sprayed them all black. And they're yellow. And no word of a lie, like really thin coats and do about seven thin coats of yellow onto a black armor. And it's still it's still not perfect. It's still like patchy yellow. And that's that right. absolute joke. And uh, but I was insistent I'm still paying them all. Um the ones that I spray black and not respray them or anything for some reason. I thought that would be a better way to do it. Um but yeah, I mean I've got so like mechanicus spray as a base which is something i do a lot these days when the colors are kind of like mixture between light and dark so i think it's quite a good one if you're not just going to go you know full contrast which i know christian does quite a bit yeah and uh, in case you're interested vanquishers are those two uh the the new two-handed uh great sword infantry oh those ones they yeah. they are cool to be fair yeah yeah, yeah they, they have really nice models just not the most amazing rules I, I, I no, I haven't even read the rules for the uh, Dominion Stormcast. <laughs> I can't remember. I was going to say to myself, I'm not going to read the rules until I work and paint on them, and then I, I've never actually worked and painted them, so I just never got around to it. I had the book. Apparently, the dragons are good. I heard. 
Yeah. Like in a fun way? No. Like in a fun <laughs> way? Like in a no one wants to play against you and you lose all your friends way. Ah, oh, I see. It's like a deep kind of way. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, like an eel way. <laughs> oh, way. I see what you mean. Um, no, I think every, every army has their time in the sun like that, don't they? Beasts of Chaos is still waiting, but you know, every other army yeah. has their time. One day. One day. One we'll day. get Chaos Dwarfs before Beasts of Chaos will have their. Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, when are they coming out then, the Chaos Dwarfs? Someone, someday. Someday. One day. Bloody hell, that is soon. <laughs> what is that the reveal? <laughs> Some day, not Sunday. All <laughs> oh, right, well, that's frankly disappointing. <laughs> um, I mean, to be fair, I've got enough armies I want to work on. I don't need them to bring Chaos Dwarfs out because I know I will probably sell half my stuff just to get an army of them. But you wouldn't regret it, though, would you? Not initially. <laughs> not at all. And Nighthorn are getting a book as well, aren't they? Well, it certainly looks like they might be getting a new character announced tomorrow. Maybe a book. Oh, what? I hadn't told you. No. I was waiting until the announcement. No. <laughs> so what's what's the deal with tomorrow then? Um, with what is it tomorrow? Sorry. It's the LVO uh, tomorrow. Um, tomorrow. Well, it's the start of LVO weekend, and they appear to be doing an announcement tomorrow. They're doing announcements for 40k, Age of Sigma, Horus Heresy. Which everyone thinks they'll be releasing the new edition of Forest Heresy tomorrow. Um, and then I think it's Necromunda and Kill Team. I think we're, I don't think we're going to get much for Age of Sigma. Mm. Uh, if I'm perfectly honest, I think they're going to announce the Fire Slayer and IDK book, and then maybe a model. Well, um, we've got a Stormcast model, haven't we? And a Nighthawk model coming. We will need Stormcast. Uh, Shocking. We're which Stormcast have we got coming? Well, there's someone holding a bird. I doubt it's going to be the Wood Elves. <laughs> uh, uh, I, think, I think it's going to be a, um, I don't know, Deepkin or something like that. Well, you but, get the two new characters, don't you, in the that battle box? Yeah, I'm going yeah. by, they did like a silhouette thing where they had the uh, Avatar of Cain yeah. and the, um, the Night Haunt. And the to which, by the way, you can now build the Avatar of Cain three different ways. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. The first one, I was like, because this helmet is so big, I was kind of along the lines of, it makes the whole model look quite short. But the new helmet, with the, like, uh, looks more Greek-like from the angle or something. Yeah. That looks very cool. I like that. Yeah, it's got three. It's got two helmet options and a bare head option, and then the axe, the sword, or the spear. So. And I'm sure there's plenty of Daughters of Cain players who are happy about that as well. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure seen whether... the thing. It's covered in so many goddamn uh, Eldar things. It's going to be a nightmare to try <laughs> well, and clean up. <laughs> my mate wants to turn it into a bloodthirster, so you like to him. Yeah, definitely. The good thing about corn, because it's quite cruel, you know, you can just, or crude even, you could just slap a corn symbol on top of the Eldar symbol instead of scraping away the Eldar symbol first. Yeah. To be fair, also, it's looking like it's going to be absolutely huge. Does it? Uh, I haven't seen it in comparison to anything else. Like the best estimations right now is putting about the same height as the Silent King model for Necrons. Oh wow! I thought the thing was about the same size as a a dreadnought. Yeah, no, it's yeah. it's going to be huge. <laughs> oh yeah, that is big. Oh, we've got a whole load of comments. Oh, oh no, it's, it's through comment in there because I was waiting for you two to stop your jibber jabber. So, um... all right. Well, I see. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> Christian wants to um, turn our attention to a congratulations he's got in the chat. But that so, was sarcasm. I'm pretty sure that's sarcasm because they lost. So. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Well, no, remind, me not, remind me not really. to watch that one then. <laughs> um, but to be Spoiler. fair, though, your ogres were um, bullying Matt, weren't they? So, well, there was that one game about two years ago where they bullied Matt, from what I remember. So yeah, they did. Yes. That's fair enough. And then we've got uh, the Rayman. So he is going on saying that New Year, New Army, for me, is Mad King of Nurgle. So you're not the only one, because we've got Yasmin, who is doing yeah. that as well. So Nurgle being very popular, and obviously they are the newest book out, aren't they, at the moment? Currently, mm. so, currently yes. The new hotness. So I'm sure at the moment we still have half the people who go, oh, I always used to be Mad King of Players, and then the other half of people go, oh, I always liked them, but I never did them. So um, that was like me when Death got an update. I was like, yeah, finally I've got an update. And they also had loads of new friends who jumped on the bandwagon. <laughs> um, but uh, he's also saying that... The you're always meta, then. 
Well, I, I kind of really have models for every army, so I kind of do everything, I suppose. So I always have, like, you know, just something in the back pocket in case. Yeah. Um, you know, like when Judgment Day comes, just, you know, always have something there, and then, boom, <laughs> you're covered. Um, and then the Rain Man is saying that the time zone thing uh, stinks for me uh, to catch these lives. Uh, yes, so where are you from then, Rain Man? Because at the moment it is 20, roughly, to 8 at night in the UK. Um, I know the um las vegas open is quite bad for anyone who's not in america isn't it to be fair it's not that great if you're in america oh what it, time? It, it's 10 p.m if you're on the west coast and 1 a.m if you're on the east coast so who is it good for no one <laughs> maybe someone in australia oh, yeah. right so what where's the where's the logic games <laughs> workshop logic <laughs> I think the logic is the fact that they're doing it post um, all the games on the Friday, so they this, have to wait for everything. This would have sounded fantastic when I decided this about two months ago. Yeah, it'd been a great time in that. And then they got actually, that means I have to be up doing it this late. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I'm expecting your full uh, post, -re post reveal. Like, what, uh, day, what day is it? <laughs> tomorrow at 6 a.m. It's tomorrow at 6 a.m. To be fair, I'll be going to bed tomorrow. I'll be going to bed tomorrow at about 5 a.m. So you could stay up a little and I'm gonna do it. Um, but is it mainly 40k? Is that what we're thinking? I I yeah, I don't think we I honestly don't think we're gonna get that much. Um signal. don't get me wrong, I do like 40k, but if, if it isn't a massive machine called a knight, or it's not a slightly smaller machine called a Necron, which is basically death just not that interested like don't get me wrong there are some cool 40k stuff but like just want it just want it to be age sigma all lord of rings be very cool not i mean if you that. believe the rumors then we should be getting uh some new chaos knights tomorrow <sighs> yeah i'm sorry i missed out the word imperial imperial knights very important there <laughs> um is there oh is there gonna be a faction reveal for the corn dragon that'd be very cool that'd be very in I think that's uh, totally, you know, what that's, that's totally. Doing. I mean, there's potentially a Nighthorn book being revealed or the Corn Dragon army coming out, so you know, it could be either. Uh, so, uh, Rainbow, sorry, saying I'm still working and in meetings. Oh man, well, I'm glad you've managed to put this on during the meeting because clearly that shows that you have definitely got some sort of escapism rather than just being surrounded by work all the time. So, good for you, and then. Uh, Dice is actually here in the chat, obviously, and I've just clicked on the thing by accident. He said something about sarcasm, which I so the problem with me is I just don't really understand sarcasm. Uh, I just don't really have that filter. <laughs> so everything I say is genuine. Um, well, poet is here. I haven't heard from Poet for a long time, so I haven't done these for a little while. So great to have you back, mate. Um, saying hey, Janagash, nice to catch another stream. Very nice of you to join us, mate. What are you working on as well? There's so many people now entering the chat. This is lovely. None of them being abusive so far. So that's always fun. Um, and then we keep got... going in the chat, then he won't get on with painting. Um, well, no, I'm almost finished with Jeffrey. Yeah, he needs to... Hey, the, the purple's going well, guys. Model. Come on. I only have to paint the rest of the thing purple, and then we might have done something. Um, a Elven Painter is saying, Good evening. Good evening, mate. Hope you're doing well. Um, if from as well, not because I want to steal any personal data or anything, but just so. We know, and um, we're all fun. It's very fun because uh, the Rain Man is from Florida, so it's almost 3 p.m. God, I do want to go to Florida at some point. It would be very nice. I've been to South Carolina and spent a day chasing crocodiles, but in the end, they ended up chasing me, and whew, what a blast that was. Um, so the Florida Man, and then we have Christian, so I'm at 245 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA. You know what? It's about... 20 minutes ago, or probably about half an hour ago now, I was watching Always Sunny in Philadelphia. So if you do like, I reckon if you're from Philly, <laughs> you either really like that program or you hate it. Um, but I, was, I, I was meant to be in Philly two years ago. Were you? Yeah. And Christopher's there now. What, what are the chances? Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> but, um, I've heard very nice things about Philadelphia, but it's mainly for the eyes of that Always Sunny program. So it's very narcissistic. <laughs> Um, but no, very cool. Um, and then we've got that guy you know, is in High Age Nagash actually building some pink horrors at the moment. Good timing. Oh, fantastic. Imagine pink horrors aren't too bad to paint, but imagine to mm. build, uh, there might be a nightmare. I haven't got a clue, uh, to be honest with you. The only one I've ever built is the one from Silver Tower, which is dramatically different from the rest of them. But um, 
Very well. I hope it's going well. Uh, the building. What sort of where are you basing them? What theme? What realm? All those sorts of questions can be asked. Uh, Aon Paper said, "I changed my name. It's uh, Russ Mikey." Um, right. So they don't have to play on my name, or that's actually your name, which is absolutely fine. That's not the name that says there. So I'm getting confused. But fantastic. It's a it's a great name. Firstly, uh, and I know someone called Russell who's a decent guy. So there we go. And then we got uh, Ryan Deer saying the same guy did the time uh, as the stock price. Yes. Well, the thing is, is that Games Workshop do like to go incredibly expensive their prices. I really can't recommend buying anywhere else apart from Games Workshop, unless that's where you locally play, of course. Um, but uh, yes, I might actually be becoming a uh, relief star for my local Games Workshop. And what I mean, I might be. I mean, I am. But uh, just just for a bit of. Uh, basically being paid and doing a little bit of hobby uh, on the odd occasion. Um, but at the end of the day, I will be telling people not to buy things from me because they can buy it cheaper somewhere else. So don't know how long I'll last, but, you know, it's always good fun. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to get a brush stroke of my model painted in between all of it. Um, and then saying the guy, you know, saying... I think the ads had um, AOS, 40k, Necromunda, Kill Team, and 30k, um, 40k fans do not get enough content. Um, <laughs> they, I presume, I think they get a lot of content. Um, but I'll tell you what, Age of Sigma does get a lot. Because I remember, remember there's times where the like, Age of Sigma 3rd edition come out and there's nothing but loads of Cruel Boys and Stormcast. And then about a month after all the news is gone, someone will easily say, Oh, there's, there's never really a lot of Age of Sigma content. It's like we just had months of it. Um, I'm quite happy when there's no new stuff because then I don't have to cover it quite personally. So I'm more than happy for it to be 40k. <laughs> but um, I'll be interested to see what they do with Necromunda because that's the game I might look to um, play at some point. So I'm definitely a big fan of those sort of skirmish games. Um, and then Rayman saying that I didn't paint anything for the last three to four months in 2021. And over the last three weeks, I've painted up 45 Nurgle models, 15 Blight Kings, and 30 Plague Bearers. Because I was going to say, they're all Plague Bearers. That's a lot of washing. But those, uh, what you call Blight Kings, there's a lot of detail on those. I was going to say, they're very detailed models. So. Yeah, fair, fair bloody pay to you. Um, I think the model I'm painting right now, that's the first thing I've been painting for the last uh, over two weeks now. So it's definitely nice to get back on the painting wagon. And then uh, A. Elvin said, I don't know. Um, the book and night haunt with one model no fire slayers book um that's what we're predicting i think we will get the fire slayers in the deepkin book because it just makes sense it'll be more weird if they didn't come out now uh, yeah than if they did uh night haunt uh the fact that they were going to get a model i presume there might be a tease of a book uh it would kind of make sense um and then yeah and then stormcast Fuck me, there's probably a new chamber coming out, presumably. Um, you know, the dragon chamber times two or whatever it is, or the hydra chamber, I, I have no idea. Um, and then Poet is saying, watching some video work I finished uh, get rendered so I can send them to the client. Very good, mate. And um, also Poet has chapter donation towards the channel. So Poet, very, very generous to you. I know you do these quite a few times when I've been doing live videos back in the past. And it never, ever goes unnoticed so thank you very much for that donation and it's going to go straight towards me being able to justify as much time as i possibly can at the moment making videos um and with the video making and stuff there was a i don't know if i said this or not but essentially uh i was wanting the idea of maybe trying to get at least one video a week or maybe two videos but as soon as i kind of basically said that and well i say it's two but i said it about i think i said that about um six weeks ago and then about a week ago, I found out that I've got some intensive uh, courses coming up for work. So I've got like four courses coming up in the next month, which is basically Monday to Friday, then work in the weekends. So basically, I don't know when I'm going to have a day off in the next month. But um, and then between when I found out I've got these courses coming out and starting these courses, which are not this Monday, but next Monday, um, I've had to do a lot of revision for them. So really have not had a lot of time. So when I've been doing things like, uh, well, I say been doing, I mean, just this hobby hangout or something, it's just something nice and easy for me to be able to do, um, still be able to interact with everyone. And what I would say though, is I have actually been working on my next video for 
um, my Soul Blight Greylord series that's been taking a very long time because it is the Soul Blight unit. So that's 17 units in total, I believe. And I've covered, I think, 13 of them so far. So I think that video so far, bear in mind it's not done, is probably about an hour and a half long. So by the time it's done, it'll probably be about two hours. So I am working in the meantime on content. It's just there's a big one going to be coming at some point. And then the troll video uh, painting it. I'd love to do that before I start these courses, but I don't know if I'll be able to. I'll try to, though. Um, but yeah, so that's anyway, that was a bit of a random uh, tangent, but that's basically what I've been doing uh, for the YouTube stuff. Uh, and then the Rayman said, I limited myself to three hours per model for the Blight Kings and I have 45 minutes on the play bearers. That's still good going, mate. So I imagine that gives you enough time to be able to paint them to the detail that you're happy with. But also, that's pretty quick as well. Right. So fair play to you. And I bet it got quicker as you got on and your uh, patience wore more thin. <laughs> it's like when I was painting my um, flesh eater court models now. It kind of be along the lines of dry brush washes, etc. And then um, <laughs> if one of their faces doesn't look particularly white, uh, bluff the black god over the face, done, sorted. Uh, way to uh, deal with that. Uh, I think we're happy with the purple on this uh, on this model. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think there's enough purple, you guys probably can't see. Nah, I doubt you can see that properly. Nah, camera's not too bad. Uh, but I reckon I was going to do like some spots of colored armor because basically a loom boss has got quite a lot of armor on him, he's covered in armor basically, apart from his hands. And I was going to do a few spots of colour and then the rest just silver. But you know what? Every single panel on him is going to be coloured, I reckon. Because like you can really get away with doing this sort of stuff, which I've, I found fantastic. Like the glue spike gets, which I've only really sort of painted squig so far, but that's the most fun I've had in painting for years. Because that's all what you get for doing a Slanesh army. Oh, the Slash Army, the white armor is close to being my favorite painted army I've ever done. Um, but the um, the reason why I really like the squig painting and the blue spike gets is because when I've been painting those squigs, I can paint them all a different color mm -hmm. and they still work, they still look unified. And because they're all based the same stuff, and they all because their theme is quite crazy and wild, you can paint them all different colors, so you don't get bored, so you never paint the same color twice, and it still looks right, to be honest with you. To be honest, and, I did something very similar with the eels near my Ideneth yeah. army as well. All different colours, all the sea creatures, the fishes, all that jazz. Yeah, it looks great. And plus, it's Delicious. just fun, just I, using yeah. different colours. And you don't get bored, do you? Like, no, it's, it's not, not repetitive, all. basically. Yeah. And with this, I imagine it's similar with the fish, because with the squigs, there's a surprising amount of detail on them, but you've got the skin, the gums, the teeth, um, and then the base hmm. and that sounds like three very small things so it's easy enough to paint um and you're not using loads of different colors um but because you go for bright skin colors and stuff and a more sort of you know realistic color for the mouth uh the contrast is strong enough that although you don't have loads of different colors involved it still looks very colorful itself and the layering you can do with the squigs so i haven't been doing them with contrast i mean layer them up i mean just go a bit heavier with the layering, and then before you know it, you've made a stripy one. So it's all it's all quite interesting. Like if anyone's, um, I don't know, uh, thinking about an army to do, or like they're a bit slump in painting or something, buy a box of squigs or the start collecting box for uh, doing so I gets like I did, and uh, it's basically made me enjoy painting again because quite frankly I wasn't enjoying it, and very much in in life with something's a hobby that you're meant to be enjoying, and you're not enjoying it. Why do it at the end of the day? So yeah, that's for, us, for me. That part of it is just gone. Like I've got two units of eels left, and I can't do it. Oh, I'm not. I can't do it. It's just more. I've picked up. Obviously, as I talked about before, the board game aspect. So I've seen playing mm -hmm. uh, Marvel United quite a lot recently, and just painting all those characters like Wolverine, painting Storm, Jean Grey, Captain America. I'm basically a load of Marvel characters, and. That's just like totally reinvigorated the whole painting. So I'm, yeah. I'm loving life at the moment with painting anyway. Yeah. Th th that's, and then that's I'll go back it. to the eels. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what I would say is I, I've been in situations before where I used to go to tournaments. And it used to be the whole, um, I have to have the army painted for the tournament and th there are deadlines and everything else. But if you've got no deadlines and you're kind of like, you're forcing yourself to, to paint up an army that you really don't want to paint up and... 
you're, you're going through it, you're hating it, you're hating it. And you spend all day at work, you come home, you don't do something you enjoy. Um, and you go, well, I have to get the army painted. Why, why do you have to get these plastic little soldiers painted for your own sake? Well, if you're not even enjoying it yourself, then... Because you do. Yeah, uh, uh, that's it. I mean, that, that's definitely what I'm telling myself with paint at the moment, because yeah. um, I've already got a few whole armies painted up, obviously, thousands of points. Exactly. But, but what, I'll be, what I'll be doing now is, um, in terms of my painting, and I'll theme it around like painting videos and stuff as well, is that I will just buy, I don't know... Um, just pick a, a, an old example, a box of fire slayers, you know, paint five of them up, that sort of thing. Am I going to do an army of it? No, nope, but that's just a separate little painting project I've done. It's kept me interested. Next thing I do, buy a box of, I don't know, orc commandos, whatever they're called from yeah. 40k. Um, and, it, and at the end of the day, I feel like for video's sake, it keeps things different and interesting. And then also for my own sake, it means I'm never going to get that repetitive um, boredom. And well, because that's the beauty of it. Once you've got yeah. a fully painted army, you have that flexibility, or you feel like you have that flexibility to then go into other projects, just dabble with other things. And you know, in full well, you've got a fully painted army. It's like my um, Sylvaneth, and they're well, all the other armies fully painted as well. That mm -hmm. I don't feel as pressured in, a, I mean, as self pressured, of course, but pressured as such to complete the eels because I've got all the other armies fully painted. Hence why I'm, you know, dabbling with other miniatures altogether. So. Well, well, that's completely it. And the, the other thing I'd say as well is um, it's it's just keeping that motivation you've got, isn't it? By what you've just said, you know, it's making you you're paying here today because you're enjoying it rather than going, well, this is rule number sixty nine, <laughs> you know, like like that sort of thing. And yeah. me as well. Last like last time I played a two thousand point game of Age Sigma was probably September, like. I'm not playing mm. two thousand point games anymore, and it's not because oh, I just I've gone off it. I love to just haven't really got the, the time or, or the space. So even if I do have the space uh, and I do it at my house, I've got to uh, well, I live with my dad, so I've got to like push everything in the living room, everything to the sides, mm -hmm. set up a, a table which makes there were two smaller tables that make a six by four foot table. There's enough space for you to be able to squeeze around each side, so it's not that enjoyable to stand next to. Um, and then after that, you take it all down. Then you have to put all the scenery mm. back, everything else. You put all the armies back. And then, like, so the whole thing is like a, a six hour thing, you know. Yeah. Sort of, I mean, yeah. I've done it for 10 hours. And it's just for one night. If the idea is when I have my own place, which I'm 26 now, and I, I plan to have my own place by the time I'm 30. Um, if I can have a spare room where I can have a six by four foot table up all the time, I don't have to take down. That will mean I'll be playing two thousand point games again. Yeah, it's, it's the whole it's it's the whole effort and the laziness and stuff. And um, it, it just takes a, a it, it takes a long time, doesn't it? Which... No, it does. I mean, uh, I'm in a similar situation in terms of like effort, as in like you know making space because the wife certainly doesn't want a table <laughs> in yeah. the house. So I'm just like the uh, idea is to get the wife off the table and I'm sort of well uh, well the thing is <laughs> I'd easily convert the other spare room but we got like the mother in law staying with us at the moment or visiting. So it's like yeah I can't really do that when we have visitors. So I'm like hmm there's nowhere to put a table. So basically it's, if I ended up buying a table, dining room table which obviously extends as my gaming table. So when Matt Sarah do come over obviously I have a game and then Obviously, then have to put it all away, pack it all away, fold everything. So it's not massively, you know, difficult or anything. But the just the simplicity and ease of just having a table there ready. It's like last night I went to Matt's because he's got basically a table like separated completely his own little room, and I'm just like, perfect. So let's go there. Table's already out. Everything scenery is already done. Let's just get going. Yeah, well, yeah, and that like I don't know if it's a mental thing, you know. Go, oh, can't be bothered to set everything. And also, while well, I keep everything, it's in my garage. So after you take everything down, you then open the door, middle of the night, taking it back to the garage. All because you can't keep it around in the house because you haven't got the space. <laughs> well, it's that. It's really that few and far between that you have games here. That well, these days anyway, because we always go to Matt's now. But before that, because before Matt moved into his new place, we always used to have games at ours. But that, again, that was like once a month. So the effort wasn't really there as such you know you didn't need to do it but if we to have games like you know once a week then i'd be like here we go again it's like <laughs> let's keep moving and keep let's like as i say right now like as i keep harking on about it but i've seen dabbling with a lot of game back into board games like heavily now and 
It's been, and again, space doesn't, don't wrong, some board games do take up a lot of space. I've been playing Twilight Imperium, which is like, it's like an epic opera of a space game. It takes about seven hours to play. We purposely book out a whole day for it. It's great, and I've had four games of it, but it's just, it's so much fun. Uh, but regardless, it takes so much space. Whereas, like, some other games, all it needs, don't need to extend the tables, the wife, family can get involved, and it's just simple. Do you know what I mean? It's like 20 minutes game, there you go, done. And that's kind of the family fun oriented reason as well, why I've got into board games a lot more. It's just because yeah. it doesn't involve this massive epic <laughs> session of like arranging a whole day to try and get a game, set up a table, you know, organize and everything. Where now I'm just like to the wife downstairs, do you want to have a game of Marvel United? Yeah, what courage do you want to be? There you go, cool. <laughs> Let's get going. Well, that, that's the beauty of it. And you know what? So uh, my mate who I play with games locally, a guy called Jamie, he's been on the channel a few times. But So when we play a game, which is at best once every two weeks, I mean, yeah. we, we probably haven't had a game for about a, a month now, as an example. Um, but when we do play, it is something like Warcry. It's something like we've been getting into Warhammer Underworlds. And the reason for that is because he came around and he's he's got the diachasm box and I've got the um, Sinesh warband from it. He's got the Lumineth warband from it. So he brings the box around. So when I was waiting for him to get to mine, um, I was bringing down what I needed. And I was like, so I've got my deck of cards. I've got the Slangor, the Archer, the Bliss Barb, the Belly Dancer, and then the Sinesh Lord. You know the four characters you get from the yeah. Sinesh warband? And they all fit on top of this stack of cards. And I heard it, held the stack of cards in my hands with the four models. And I was like, that's all I need to bring downstairs. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this is a joke. <laughs> right. Because he was, yeah. obviously he's got the dice from the box set as well. So I didn't need to bring that. There. It's like, this is, this is perfect. And then I've got like um, uh, the, the wolf riders at some point to build up the, uh, you know, that wall band for the goblins and stuff. And I was reading yeah. through like, some of the law then uh, my mate bought the um crimson courts you know the vampires mm. so we we're comparing both of them and i can't remember the rules were like to be honest with you but just the law side all the cards they all have like little bits of artwork on which is like a lovely little detail mm. and then the the vampire court is all sort of like really like royal or really sort of like um uh what's the word like uh like pristine and how they talk to each other and very sort of noble and all that sort mm. of thing um and then I don't know, like, for example, I can't remember the names, but like uh, uh, one of the vampires would say like, uh, I don't know, da -da -da. you know, don't don't slay the mortal so, you know, viciously, you know, take your time, enjoy it, all these sort of, you know, royal sort of things. And then the grot ones are just along the lines of like, yeah, stick it where it hurts and all that sort of thing. And then the grot, the reason why the wolf gang's there is because the leader of that, of that pack of three is um he um tried to overtake the leadership of um the wolf gang he's part of and then it says um specifically after he failed he chose self-exile rather than facing the consequences so that's why he's gone off and then his two buddies joined him not because out of loyalty but purely because of how much they were involved in the failed coup so <laughs> What happened in the end, they've gone to Diachasm because they've been told there's this big stabber there, which apparently is big enough to kill their boss back at the wolf gang. So, you know, that, that's all they've got. Yeah. The vampire one goes on for ages. You know, some things are just... <laughs> but but it's, uh, uh, that, that's like three models to pay yeah. up. And I get that. I, I fully get that. It's like I've, I've dabbled with Warcry quite a bit. I am going to get into that. Um, I'll have Underworld as well. Mm. I just need to get given a demo played online with it and then have a clue what I was doing because the computer obviously it, you know the, the game controls the dice here and then so you say bang 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 these are the symbols Jeez. doesn't explain what it is and then they, they disappear in a few seconds and I'm like oh great I've just done something <laughs> is that what you play against Doug yeah it was yeah, yeah. because nobody <laughs> wanted to play with him at all and, and then I was like oh you know what I'll play so I also messaged him online and just said yeah I'll, I'll pop on so yeah just joined and I was like, all right, obviously everyone, you know, in chat and everything. I've not played this game at all. All right. You beat your didn't you? I will go into it and just have fun because that's all I care about. So yeah. obviously went on and uh, yeah, it got got spanks hard, but it was <laughs> it was fun still. As you see my fire slayers out there. Um but no, like going back to what you're saying, though, in terms of like the size of the games, or like you just need like this, like few models and a deck of cards. I don't know why, but it's certainly the older I've got. 
the more and more that that becomes appealing. <laughs> yeah. In terms of instead of harking like massive armies around, I've just preferred now. So that's why I started to edge towards ogres because you don't need that many models. It's just you know a few of yeah. them and then bang on the table. Very simple. There's the enemy. Let's go. <laughs> I'm hungry. Let's go. This so, is why. Yeah. Well, this is why I used to love my like uh, crit flare army for a flesh of courts. So I just look at the table and I go, I've got 21 models. If anything, this is too many. <laughs> yeah. You know, like in comparison. But, and, and I think, and it's not like I was saying, oh, I don't like 2,000 point games and stuff anymore. I think really what this means is when I have a 2,000 point game, it will just feel more special as well. Yeah. And yeah. Because I, I purely I just play for fun and narrative now, um, it will encourage me to come up more of a story you know if i'm used to playing mm. with 10 models now i'm playing with 100 so mm. like what's the what's the story behind this and everything else and um war cry because i know you mentioned that that's a, an amazing game yeah um and that's a game where for example i'm thinking oh what should i paint first for my blue spike gets and firstly you know obviously paint what you want but for me i'm like well if i paint this that and that then i've got a war band for my war cry it's sorted you know instantly so then that yeah. means i don't have to paint 10 squigs first I can paint that, I can then paint a troll, and then yep. it just gives you so much freedom, I think. Yeah, exactly that. So you're going on about sort of like looking forward into what you're wanting to paint now. But yeah. I actually have a genuine question for you, because like I'm only just getting into like actual Warhammer and playing the game, and the thing that's really drawn me to it is Nurgle. Yes. Um, because it's Gribbly and I love Gribbly, but what drew you to Warhammer and what was your first army? Mikey, do you want me to go first or do you want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> How long we got, chaps? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've got, well, I'm 33 and I started right. when I was 12. I... So I think we've got a few. A few okay. Right, well, the first thing I was going to say was. A very sort of dark joke that I didn't know how well it would be accepted here in the wider YouTube community. So you can always join the Discord for that sort of stuff. But um, <laughs> I'll I'll let one of my guests go first. Let someone uh, like for you, Christian, uh -oh. or you, Luke, or or who, okay. who wants to go. And I'll then I'll keep it short. I can keep it short and sweet, right? So oh, I know it's very rare of me because I usually ramble. But first army was lizard. Well, you've had your time, Luke. When did you into it? <laughs> it's pretty much well that's all i needed to say so what i'm a fancy when i was about 12 i may have been slightly younger um so I basically saw my mates have a game with his high elves against chaos demons and um, i think they were corn and i was like what the hell is this so obviously he's like telling us what the game's about and i said oh cool so me and my brother went to the store and we're like, mom, 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 look at this, and all that stuff um, as we were kids and all. And then I got myself lizard men because dinosaurs. Yeah, that is so, yeah, so that was my very first army. And I don't actually, in terms of painting, I only truly got into painting heavily. I only had one out of the, what, 15 years or so painting or playing Warhammer Fantasy. Might have been longer, I don't know. Um, but anyway, um, out of the years I've been playing Warhammer Fantasy, I only painted one army fully, and that was my Dark Elves. I only really started to get into painting a lot more with Age of Sigma, and was that six years now? Six years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. I was yeah. saying it's five years for too long, so it must be six now. Yeah, so it's, I think it's about that length of time. And now every one of my armies is painted. So I think, again, I, I've got a lot more patience. I appreciate it a lot more with painting. It's also good for mental, my mental health as well, because everything yeah. just, you know, I take a break. The, uh, uh, the whole world disappears and literally just focus on painting, and it's fun. So that, for me, is the reason. And scene. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's my acting done. Next. <laughs> That's, you know what? That was short and sweet. And um, I said okay, it would. No, 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 there is a comment. Oh. oh, right. Okay, right. So sorry if I've left the chat. Um, so we've got um, VOR, no go. So VOR, I presume, stands for a model, and then no go for painting it. I think that's maybe what it is, unless I'm saying it completely wrong. Um, so be wary of that. And then you've got Poet saying, all right, that's done now. Uh, can work on building this corn box. Found the old starter with the priest skull crushers in it for the wise um, army. Big corn, uh, Slay's Darkness player. 
what I will say is that Star Collecting Box is fantastic where you've got the 10 Blood Warriors in it and stuff as well. I'd uh, really like to buy that if I didn't already have enough things. Um, so do you want me to go or Luke, do you want to go? No, you can go. Cool. So in my I Am A Wargamer video, I listed all the reasons that got me into Warhammer. So go check that out. Smash the like button on that video, please. Um, they didn't get enough likes, annoyingly. Um, so some more would be great. Um, but if you want to hear a here and now situation. So um, I was a young kid, um, you know, obviously back in the 90s. Um, actually, I think it might have been 2000s by this point. So you're not old enough for it to have been in the 90s. <laughs> They, I was going to say. I, I, gonna say. <laughs> I was so first time I ever saw Warhammer was um I had a mate from school. Um I remember his name still, it's Jake, and he had um some models at his place. And I went around his place once and he had some really old bear in mind this was in the I think the end of the 90s, maybe, and these models were old then, I think. He had some orcs and goblins. And he also had some lizard men. And I thought they were amazing. You know, these like little models of these, you know, like cool um, creatures and or dinosaurs at the end of the day. And orcs are really cool. And um, I saw that. And then basically um, a, a few years later, I think one or two years later, uh, I had like a, um, a procedure done at hospital. And my mum got me um, some Warhammer off eBay as like a nice little um, present to, you know, back from hospital sort of thing, what was really nice for. And that was Lizardman. And that was, um, I think, about 20 of the skinks that had the bows and arrows. So those old ones. And then there was like a, an old Croxigore metal one there and a few mm -hmm. other things. Um, Don't worry, the Croxigore model still hasn't changed. It's still, yeah, it was just <laughs> interesting. <laughs> like, um, and so had that. And then as, as time went on, uh, I collected more things. I collected uh, up until the age of probably about um, 10 or 12, I collected some uh, night goblins. You know, funny enough, here we are again. Um, so some orcs and goblins, um, some lizard men stuff, obviously. And the thing is with that, though, it was very much, I uh, didn't have loads of pocket money and all that sort of thing. So it was very small things. So it was just buying, like, more night goblins and more night goblins or... Uh, not really like trolls or anything like that. And mm -hmm. um, I did that, collected a little bit of Lord of the Rings as well. Didn't play any of these mm -hmm. games, just really liked how they looked, um, especially the Lord of the Rings because the movie, movies were coming oh, out. They had been out, you know, obviously a great time to collect them. Mm -hmm. um, and from the age, you could slowly start to see in the Games Workshop the Lord of the Rings range getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, which was also a thing I remember. Um, but then I took a break for about 10 years. Um, Obviously, GCSE, school, life, that sort of thing. But I always uh, checked up on the hobby. Like I'd always go on the Games Workshop website like once every six months or something just to see what was there. And I saw when the new Carnosaur came out, I was like, oh, fucking hell, that looks really cool, that thing. Um, or the Troglodon. But I remember then going, like, imagine spending like £50 on a model. And then, <laughs> here we are. So <laughs> imagine how crazy that would be, spending like £50 on a plastic dinosaur. Oh, can you imagine who'd buy a corn dragon? <laughs> yeah, imagine spending that on a dinosaur. I don't know if you guys can see, but there is a corn dragon. <laughs> um, so oh, yes. uh, the other thing to say, so basically I did that, and then uh, after about two months after Age Sigma came out, again, I hadn't checked the website for ages, I didn't know about any of this, uh, I went to go to the tallest car park, in my, so it sounds very weird and it's not sexual. I went to the tallest car park in my town um, because there was the last Vulcan bomber that was going to fly past. And on the way to get to this very tall car park on foot, um, we, uh, well, I say we, I was with my dad, uh, walked past a games workshop in my local town, which there had never been a games workshop in my local town. It was practically brand new. So I thought, oh, that's, that brings, you know, that's a, uh, what's, what's the term? Um, Blast from the past. Uh, well, I was going to say a splash, but it wouldn't really work, would it? So that's a blast from the past. Um, so I thought I'll, I'll go back there at some point, and I uh, I went in there. I think like a week or so later, I uh, met a, a fantastic guy called Neil, who was the manager there. Um, I said uh, hi. I, I saw the store the other day, and like since I saw the store, it's was, was interesting getting back into Warhammer. So I've been on YouTube. Uh, I've been watching loads of lore videos in the world. That was turns out a lot of the lore videos I watched were from a guy called Arch Warhammer, who turns out to be a a racist, mm -hmm. so 
we won't talk about that. Um, but I watched a lot of other law videos, and I was really, really keen to get into um, to Warhammer, all that sort of thing. Oh, I can't wait to I really want to start the Vampire Council, that sort of thing. And then uh, Neil, the manager, was like, right, so the world has blown up. And I was like, oh. And I was like, <laughs> oh, so what, what is it now? And he, he was basically going to be going, we don't, none of us really know what it is now. It's a realm or potentially realms. What, what 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 places do we have in the realms? Well, there's the the realm gate. Which one? Multiple. Um, and then there's a place called Azir. Why do you need to know anything else? So I was a little bit like shocked. I was like, oh right, okay, that that's fine. Um, and he was like, do you want a demo game? And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll take a demo game. And obviously, he made sure I won the game as a real manager would do to get people into the store. And uh, well, I picked the corn guys because in a situation when you're presented with red versus blue. I'm a guy who goes for red. So I'm actually painting red right now. You know, it's free for this. Um, so I would play this corn, uh, won the game. And I can tell you right now that if it was fantasy, I probably would have gone, oh, you know what? This is just a bit like, I'm not, I don't fully understand how this game plays in the first playthrough. Like, I'm just not going to really, can't really get bothered to get into this. So, the fact that the game was so easy to get into, and although I was upset about fantasy, it was it was the best thing really because uh, I learned how the game worked, and then bought a box of skeletons and played with. Honestly, probably had about four games of that box of skeleton warriors, so ten skeletons, and then eventually I bought a white king. So then I started doing things like command abilities and stuff, and then I think I bought some black knights after that, and then uh, collected death for about a year, then expanded into some chaos um, because I was like. Oh, the only thing I don't want to do about doing another army is what I love about death is their banners mean I can bring back models. And then I saw that demons, if you roll one for their battle shot, you can bring back models. And I was like, oh, start collecting demons of corn. Here I come. So that was that. And then here we are six years later. Is this, I don't really know what the question was exactly. I was uh, say, you needed uh, you needed like breadcrumbs uh, on that trail of thought there. Yeah, I mean, that, that was, can I just say that was the quick version? <laughs> the long, I just want to say the long version had songs, had poetry, and had yeah. illustration. Well, I'm just missing the illustrations now. God damn it! Well, yeah. if you watch his "Why I Became a War Gamer," that has it I all in. <laughs> <laughs> the video. Just um, and also, the, there's a like feature on the video. Make... Fun. Good evening, Tim. <laughs> Tim Hans says good evening. <laughs> oh, oh, Tim. Oh, hello, Tim. So how are we doing, mate? Nice of you to join us. Um, and also, everyone else, don't just hear my ramblings. And Christian, who I do apologise, they go on for a bit too long, um, <laughs> about how we got into Warhammer. Tell us yourselves as well. As it generally is always really interesting to hear that. And Tim, I hope you're doing well. Thank you very much for joining us. Where are you from as well? As that is kind of a compulsory thing you have to put in the chat these days. Um, and then uh, Luke hasn't answered the question, though, I don't think, did you, Luke? I have not. I feel bad that I didn't start with lizard men. That seems to be the theme going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, kind of is that is the way for. I tell you what, someone put a comment on my um, how to start collecting seraphim video the other day, and they said I was really looking forward to getting into Age Sigma and starting seraphim. But after watching this video, I feel like everyone's going to think I'm a prick if I do the army. I'm like, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to play it competitively. I think it just always turns out that way. I was going to say, I don't, Mikey, I don't know I, what the meta is. What is the meta currently? Is Seraphon doing really well? Like, I don't know. I presume so. Um, well, there we go. Let's start with that thought. It's a very narrative army. <laughs> I remember what that game where you were playing. And was it? Ah, oh, who was it? Oh, mate, there, there, there are multiple games I have. Delete. Was it Monty? Was it Monty? Was it, was it Monty who was like, that's oh, fine. I'm going to bring, like, you know, this isn't a meta list. And then brought a meta list. No, it wasn't a meta list. That was the oh, issue. Okay. It really, it was a oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that was it. That was the first time I fought against Seraphon in their like new book. And it was against the uh oh not the Starborn, what the coalesced. And yeah. I played sport, and I was just basically my, my whole thought process on TTS, so you can see me, but my whole thought process was just like this. Right, okay, so you get this, you get that. Right, do I can I do anything now? And it's like no, and then like beat me. And I was just like oh, just like really fed up. He goes. And this is the non-competitive list. And I was like, yeah, sure it is. And it was true. It, was yeah. it really was. Anyway, you do I was like, I'm not, saying I'm, I'm not saying I'm great Age Sigma, but I don't think I'm that bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that, was a, that was an amusing game. But yeah, no, so uh, I... Uh, 
Oh, yeah, sorry, I'll just say that was a game where he killed my Archaeon in one turn with a Carnosaur, I think. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. And Archaeon was on full health. <laughs> oh, my so God. Did you start with Seraphon? Or Lizard no, Lizard? I didn't start with Seraphon. Um, Don't say Metonia. I, 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 I was in high school, and I went over to my friend's house, and he had, he, he had he collected Urukai. He did the uh, Lord of the Rings. Mm, nice. Uh, Very good. Chuck Ashley. And I remember, like, I think he had some Rohan, so we'd play a couple of games where I, I was Rohan. But, oh, I like, from what I've seen, the rules that we played were nothing to do with how Lord of the Rings game actually played. <laughs> <laughs> from what it I remember... Was, was it called Floorhammer by any chance? There? <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah, no. It more resembled how Warhammer Fantasy played than how Lord of the Rings <laughs> played, actually. It's uh, like, like in the book, and half it's kind of half, it's this fantasy, the other one says, ring. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, so I went, yeah, sorry. I went in, and then at that time, everyone in the area was mu much more playing 40k than fantasy. Mm. So I started with Space Marines, as everyone does. Apparently mm -hmm. not, because these guys started with dinos. Yeah, well, no, no, no. <laughs> and then, like, I, I played, I played 40k. I told every other kid in my school had Space Marines, though. That helps. Um, and then one like one Saturday, my local store was running a like come along and have a try of Warhammer Fantasy. Like you know, yeah, you already play this, but come play the other one. And that one, I, like a whole load of like some of the old collectors brought in like multiple different armies, and they all had them on the side. And like you would run, and the whole day went across, and you ran through the different phases of the game as the day went on on mm. different tables with different armies so you could get a feel for it all and everything oh, that's cool it was a really good day i mean obviously the whole idea was at the end of the day whichever army you enjoyed the most you picked up a start collecting box and tried to convince mm. your parents to buy um <laughs> and but yeah with that that one i'd uh i did i i i started with bretonia um and for my entire time of playing warhammer fantasy they never got a new uh uh rule book <laughs> So it was very very cheap on the old books for me. <laughs> yeah. uh, in fact, they didn't even get any new models either. Like, that was very, very good. Um, do you still have your Bretonnia? I do still have my Bretonnia army. I was also the idiot who decided that uh, every single one of my knights needed a completely separate chivalry, uh, like uh, heraldic paint scheme. Of course, there's lots of different regions in Bretonnia. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was an absolute awesome. nightmare. But yeah, I used to play against my brother. He he had Seraphon. Mm. He Kieran collected lizard men. It doesn't surprise me that Kieran collected dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, he 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 did uh, lizard men. But I, I remember I always used to run like two blocks of twenty five men at arms, two blocks of twenty five archers, two trebuchets, and the rest were knights. Uh, I was like, it didn't really matter about the knights because whatever hit the block of twenty five men at arms just wasn't going anyway it, it just takes so long to chew through that and then i just cycle charge them in the flanks with the knights yeah. i just realized why you like to play cities of sigma because they're a lot like <laughs> and, and yet uh, for an army which is purely based almost purely based out of old warhammer fantasy models the one army it doesn't draw from is bretonia yeah, <laughs> yeah well you can I think every, unless the mercenary rules have changed, you can bring in flesh of your courts, can't you? So you can bring you in between. Yeah, well, that was the. Uh, I remember going back when I went back to find out about Age of Sigma. I um, I was walked in. And I was like talking to the guy who I later found out was Jason. Oh. Yeah, it was a while ago, back when he ran the store in in this city. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I, and you know, obviously it's a new game, but I collect Bretonia. And he handed me the start collecting box for fleshy decors. He went, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Enjoy. It's like, <laughs> went, what? He went, yep, yeah, there you go. Well, it's that thing, isn't it? Where it's like, you know, right, so um, we're all going to a new home, everyone. So I hope everyone's excited for the big move. Go like, you know, um, I don't know, uh, Vampire Count, you know, you guys going to come on the Empire, you will be there, all that. Um, Dark Elves, we'll find a way for you. Don't worry. Beastman, oh, of course you'll be here. Um, Bretonia, yeah. Um, see, there's only a limited amount of seats. And um, mm -hmm. you and Team Kings, we just, just don't really vibe. So, yep. So. Uh, both armies as well. Oh, no, you got, but the thing is, is that you are apparently legends now. 
she's getting to the way of saying King, that they don't care about you. At least Tomb Kings have got OBR now. Yeah, like yeah. I'll, I'll be honest. When I hear people go like, "Oh, they might still make a Tomb King faction," OBR is the Tomb King faction. There's no, there's not anything else. There's no question. No but it, yeah. it, I, I think it does. Like I know we joke and I say, "Oh, flesh eater courts from Tony now," but really would annoy me. Like if I spent thousands of pounds on a collection and then games workshop goes, "Yeah, well, we're not gonna completely rule it out of the game, so you can't really be too angry at us." But um, yeah, if you want to play it competitively or anything poor you have to ask mm -hmm. your opponent's permission which is basically the best way of saying no well that's going to say me and obviously you know, i didn't go into his details <laughs> you guys are mine but yeah i think when the whole thing when it came out aos I, I lost a lot of friends who played the game in terms mm -hmm. of obviously they, they just dropped everything there's you know, left and just did other things I decided to give it a go. My word was the it was a bit off, as we all know. I won't go into it too much detail too long, but it was it was really really painful, should I say, to try and get over that. Just because, I mean, I had so many armies invested so much time into the lore, into the history. That's why I'm so glad about Total War Warhammer. Yeah, because that then was my still my connection to that world, if you like. But yeah, and it's obviously got all so many novels, books, everything like that. And it's, I think I had about seven or eight armies over that period of time. So, are you looking forward to Warhammer the Old World, or are you apprehensive? I am not anymore at all. When it first came out, I was like, I just want to say, I wasn't even when it first came out. I'm not looking forward to it at all because for me, I just see this as like, oops, we made a mistake, and therefore, Total War Warhammer was so successful. Mm. And then now, oh, let's try and make more money. Let's bring it back. Oh, you can use your old models again. You can do it. It's like six years later, mate. People yeah. move on. <laughs> I, I yeah. imagine and so, I imagine yeah. Total War Warhammer was uh, probably the most successful Total War game for quite a long time. Like, yeah. obviously, Total War is a very successful company, but I imagine. No, yeah. But that changed, the, that changed the landscape in terms of the game itself. Mm. Like yeah. the engine and stuff. I do. What's so I just want to. Sorry. Go I was on. just going to say, I just want to. Um, just want to go back to the chat because I know um, Tim replied to us what we were saying earlier about like, how we all got started. Um, so Tim says, uh, well, I started with AOS in December last year, so I'm pretty new. I came from the game Total Warhammer. Well, here we go. <laughs> and that uh, um, inspired me to play AOS. The only um, problem I had was that I loved dwarves. But did anyone read this before we got into the conversation? No, no. Basically, we were just talked about <laughs> so this. Like, oh, we missed the next comment. <laughs> Unfortunately, dwarves aren't as present in AOS as I hoped after that I yep. fell in love with Stormcast Turtles, and I'm sitting here painting like three and a half thousand points worth of Stormcast Turtle troops. Um, yeah, so that is clearly commitment. And um, what I would say with dwarves, I have actually, I don't want to keep referring people to another video I've done, but I have actually done a video with Poet, who is in the chat about the law of dwarves so you know if you do want to catch up see who they are yep your traditional dwarves yep don't talk about those um well we do a little bit you got this Dwarden. yeah Dwarden. dwarves well, what's this that way speaking, speaking of dwarves <laughs> yeah and people saying they aren't as present i will read to you my dwarf list that i have written up <laughs> ready because i always have this in my back pocket so it's the cities of sigmar tempest i mm -hmm. Which is a Warden King and a Rune Lord, 10 yep. long beards, 20 hammerers, 20 iron drakes, an Arcanaut frigate, Gotrek, and 10 thunder uh, uh Grunstock Thunderers from the KO. Mm. A pure dwarf list. There you go. Nice. So chuck those three and a half thousand points of Stormcast Turtles away and buy this list of Luke. <laughs> <laughs> the no. Rain Man um, has also commented. <laughs> Uh oh, start playing fantasy back in 08. Yeah, with Tomb yeah. Kings. Oh. they I do, I do really like the Tomb Kings. I really like Mercury Kings as an ad. Uh, I started playing 40k back in 1995 with Dark Angels. Good year, 95. Good year. It, was a fan, yeah. it was a fantastic year. I actually heard the best year. Uh, the yep, pig is I a mighty agree. animal. I'd like to everyone else know. Uh, <laughs> my gaming group, um, from middle school through high school is getting back together. Oh, that's awesome um oh, how cool is that you know like um old friends reuniting for warhammer because i think i think we all have that gap don't we a bit yeah. with, uh, with warhammer and then what we do realize is that 
life for not for the most part but for a considerable part of life it sucks so warhammer makes us feel better and that's why we sort of have to go through this hardship we have to you know kids you know things are generally all right not oh go for all your qualifications to right. be able to pay for your living and then you realize that actually doing your living sucks so you need to do something to bring you back to your childhood and that is warhammer it's a firm believer in that. Um, so no, that's a that's very good. And yeah, I mean to be honest, I think Tim King, I think Tim Kings and Batonia still have rules, don't they? Like old war scrolls and stuff, but they're still uh, I don't know anymore. They're probably they're 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 I, I, they probably are in legends. I can check in mm. a minute. But they're probably things like what's their movement? It's a one inch actually, that one to be fair. That horse is very slow. <laughs> but it's it's a whole thing though, we're going back to obviously. Um, what we were saying before, though, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be getting into the, the new old, uh, fancy. Oh yes, just because I'm very skeptical. First of all, what type of gameplay? The same going back to square bases as well, which for me is just like, well, for those people who've converted and put all their old fancy models onto round bases, so then they can play AOS. You're saying now they can't necessarily play. Uh, are you going back to movement trays again? And there's too many, too many questions. And again, it's just reinvesting into a whole new army, whole new set of rules, load of other stuff. And yeah, I just don't have that time anymore. Particularly yeah. if the rumors to, are to believe, and it's going to be a Forge World job as well. Yeah, I think it'll be Forge World. What was that, it'll sir? Be it'll be a specialist game, won't it? Yeah, it's, it, the rumors are stating it's going to be a Forge World, a bit like Horus Heresy. Oh, grim! Even in the price hikes, then you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I, I don't get. It. I think, I think what this is is like you say. They saw the success of Total Warhammer, and then they're like, "Oh, people are still moaning about the old world. Just make this thing." And I don't think, I don't think a lot of effort's going to go into this thing. Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be some cafe and some Kisler stuff, and that's it. Yasmin and I were discussing this last night. If you wanted to do it correctly, you'd have had the had the game ready and releasing with Warhammer Total War Three. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's why I thought Warhammer Total War. Okay, so before the pandemic, well, I think Warhammer Total War Three was a quite behind schedule anyway. And I thought, oh, maybe they're waiting until the old world comes out. But clearly, clearly yeah. not. Because yeah. so Warhammer Total War Three will come out. Then about a year or two later, the old world will come out, and then maybe. it'll be like, like you were saying, Christian, the uh, you know, oh yeah, oh, yeah, completely the old world. Yeah, do you, do you want to go back to Warhammer? I said, oh, I've, I've done it, mate. I've played all the games. All yeah. right. Well, that's it. I mean, it's like even Total War Warhammer now. I've I played that from the very first it came out. We've got all the expansions, get everything. I haven't played it now for about six, seven months. And it's not because I'm thinking it's just because I don't have time to play it. So when Total War Warhammer 3 comes out, I will find time to play it, but it would mean I'm gonna have to sacrifice something else whilst I play this game. So I'm yeah. like painting just goes to the side. Huh? The painting will just go to the side. Well, that's what I don't want to do yeah. either. <laughs> well, well, that's it. I mean, like, I will, like I say, oh, it's, it's hard to get the time to. I will be buying that game because I know it'll be amazing. Oh, well, that's for sure. Because I will buy like, game if it's just like a weekend or something. I just book out like Saturday or mm. whatever and just go hell for leather on it. Because that's the thing with Total War. You don't want. It's not a game to be played for half an hour here, half an hour there. It's a game you've got to play for no. about six hours in a row. Oh yeah. Especially because I played it for like two hours in a row, and and I, and I might not even uh, find a battle. It's just. <laughs> management uh, oh have you heard about the uh, campaign as well online campaign yes online campaign yeah, I am go play, that, right? <laughs> so, what's this you can do an, you know, our online campaign that we did that two player one. Oh yeah yeah apparently you can go up to eight players oh wow so imagine, well, I don't that thing. they are also releasing a shortened campaign so you can play it in one evening oh i like oh, the multiplayer one yeah, the multiplayer eight play up to eight player will be a shortened campaign with the with, and you it, all the players play uh, at the same time, so you're not waiting on other people, and you everything's also resolved. Well, I don't know about that, but yeah, the well, idea is you, I, the well. idea is you should be able to complete the campaign in one evening. Wow. Oh wow, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah, so I'm quite quite excited to see how that plays out. And then again, so, I, then again, professionals tell me I should be able to play a 2,000 point game of Age Sigma in two and a half hours. So, 
Well, <laughs> I'd say that I'm pinch of salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah pinch of salt. I, I, I've, I've played, I've played a game in like twenty minutes. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, tabled someone, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, and I, I got tabled. <laughs> right. uh, if a game only goes on for twenty minutes, there's either one or two things happen straight away after. Either you hear these words or you say these words. Or I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, if you don't know the person, you might hear the words, this is well broken. It's like, yes, yes, it is. I go, this is well broken. Oh, I didn't realize it was. I just happened to club these units together. It turns out there's loads of synergy. Who would have known? So she knew exactly what you did. But, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll tell you what, though. I was obviously very excited about uh, Total War 3 coming out. And then I hadn't been more excited since, though, seeing the... Um... Oh, by the way, we've got a How to Build Bear Faction. In total Warhammer 3. Hey, you know what? That it's looks Demon Prince. Fantastic. Yeah, I how to build your own Demon Prince. Oh, that is Jesus Christ, that's cool. It looks really, really good. I the only I mean it's amazing, but if I'm really picky, Joe, it would have been really good. Go on. So instead of you've got this demon prince and you choose how he looks and all that sort of thing, and how it turns out, you start off with him just being a, a chaos lord. And then he earns demonhood mm. at some point. Yeah. I mean, I know that would be like, well, then that's the Warriors of Chaos faction. Then how does it... Because imagine this is just pure demons, this faction. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, you can get some mortal this, units, but not many. Because there's yeah. also now the outpost system. So if you get allies, uh, like defensive or um, military alliances with people, you can put outposts in their cities, which... A provides them with extra garrison. That's cool. You can also spend a legion points to hire units from their roster. Oh wow. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I spent slightly too many days lately watching playthroughs. I was gonna say, I've, I've not done <laughs> any of that. No, that's, that's good stuff though. Yeah. I haven't so I haven't watched the playthroughs, so I've only just watched basically what the Total War YouTube channel put out. But it is so what factions are there? So there's Chaos Undivided, there's Corn. Oh, you're there's starting, you start with eight factions? It's Corn, Nurgle, Slanesh, Zinch, Build your Build a Bear Demon, yep. Cafe, Ogres, and Kislev. Oh, Why are you referring to it as the Build a Bear Demon? Right. You're gonna have to explain that. Okay. You mean the Build a Bear Factory? Yes. So instead of Basically. having a cute little demon where you put like the heart in at the end or a cute little bear, we end up having this this thing that's corrupted by all the powers of chaos. Um and really wants to bite you. You you get you start with a demon prince, and then as you play, you pledge different things to each god, and then you get like different part body parts to change your model and your weapon. So like like a child that's manipulated the system and has two parents who are divorced and they're both millionaires and can do everything he wants to get exactly what he wants. That's the system. Why why have I got a nurgling on my painting desk? Wow. That is, that is a good, uh, great unclean one, that one. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> you should put that on a face. As well. Yeah, it's it's got like abs for days. Wow. <laughs> Could you put that on a face? Well, uh, I was talking with a local store when I bought it for Yasmin for Christmas. They were like, if you buy seven and sew them together and put them on a dinner plate, then, you know, it's a ridiculous scaled um, nurgling. Yeah, that'd be cool. It's warm. We'll make a pillow out of it. <laughs> um, oh, God, why would you give her these ideas? I need more nurglings. No, they're yes. expensive. Aww. So... Just go back to the chat. We've got the Rayman saying that I gave all of my Tomb Kings to a buddy of mine who collected old GW models. He was having money troubles, and I traded some 3,000 points of, uh, for a Plague uh, Burst Crawler. What's a Plague Burst Crawler? Uh, it's, a 40, it's a 40k model. Fair enough. That's cool. Well, that's very nice of you to do. And I'm sure it definitely helps them on money terms because I knew that they were worth quite a bit. Those, uh, Skip these, yeah. well, I, see, I see some person going like, all right, I've got a team can catapult. I want a grand for it. I won't take anything less. And it's like, well, I think you'd be waiting quite a while. I did um, see my post. <laughs> <fun>. <laughs> you see my post? Yeah, did you see my post on eBay? One or two. 
Um, mm. Good, doesn't it? One pound and nothing. Uh, the Raymond saying that <laughs> he ended up uh, passing away. Oh, during the pandemic because he lost his business, parents, and his house. Oh, I really saw it here, but I mean, that's a uh, that's sad. Um, terrible, terrible time. Um, pandemic. I know. I know someone who uh, is not here anymore uh, since the pandemic and uh, just became very lonely, uh, very lonely, and um, unfortunately, um, mentally not in the right place. So it does happen. Uh, but you know, at the same time, that's why I always say for people to come hang out, talk about Warhammer and stuff. It's it's great for mental health. And I'm not putting myself on anything on that level, but I know I don't know, I hadn't done any pain for about three weeks. And like what you were saying earlier, Christian, like uh about like your mental health and stuff, like I just mm. haven't had time to paint, but at the same time, you should make some time because it just brings you down, just generally, because it you don't have that escapism from the world. Yeah. Um, and because I had time to paint, I had time to play video games or anything, so you just sort of like in the real world all the time, and it's uh, it quite a lot of time it's crap, so and, do you need that escape? Then, yeah, and, and for me that. personally as well, obviously, you know, Mike, you, well, you know, full well, I've suffered um, well, yeah. a bit of tragedy myself as well, so but in terms of like painting as like a relaxation kind of thing as well, I think for me, I would get, I get more out of painting and the sense of accomplishment than I do playing a game at this moment in time. So when I know I've painted a model, I'm like, okay, cool, it's painted, I can use it, da, 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 and you know, for But then when I'm playing a game, it's that for me is just like, you know, it's just pure, it don't work, it's fun, it's great. But at the same time, I don't get the self, you know, I don't get the accomplishment kind of productivity factor in the wearing a paint, I get that as well. So that's, it's like a twofold kind of thing. Yeah, I, I completely agree and I think, uh... With gaming as well, it's kind of one of those things, isn't it? Where unless you're like prepping for a tournament, you go, "Well, I've got that game in now, so I know how my army does against that army." Or something. If you're just just playing casual games and stuff, it is it, it's fun, but it isn't you know that sort of sense of achievement by the end of it as much. And especially you know, if you lose the game as well, you kind of feel like, especially if you. To be fair, you are playing, you know, playing competitively, and you lose the game, you kind of feel like I've just wasted the last three hours of my life. <laughs> And just put you in a foul mood where painting, yeah. at least you're painted, you're right. <laughs> exactly. You know, very few times of things are your models worse or off after you've painted them, unless you're talking in terms of the value of your models, because they must be good, at, usually. Um, and then uh, the very much saying that uh, average game length in uh, our club is uh, two, two and a half hours, 2,000 points. Bloody hell, you guys are very speedy. Um, most games are decided unless someone is slow or learning. That's fair enough. That's me every game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, most, most of the games. Stop learning. <laughs> yes, I learn, learn all the time. Um, and I'm slow as well, because uh, I've been told that I talk quite a bit, and oh, I don't yeah. know if this is true. Um, but I, I not hear it at all. Well. Not at all. I have no idea what you're on about when you're saying that. Mm. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I like, to be fair, I think when I did the video with Monty about how to start collecting Seraphon, uh, <laughs> in, like I'll be honest, I was talking to the, I was talking to him for about three hours before we started that video, and the video went on for about two hours. And part of the three hour conversation was start off going, okay, mate, because it's a bit late already, so we'll, we'll get straight into the video. Um, between now and then, we ended up watching a video together about um, some girl that is, gets paid a lot of money to, to pretend to be a dog. Uh, but, you know, two, $200,000 a week, so fair, fair play to her. Um, so we watched that, and then that led to other videos, and then I posted something in the Discord about Belle Delphine. Um, but here we are. Oh, so, God, I remember that. Yeah, yeah that was uh, We worked it out. It was going to cost $8,500 for an hour, I think is how much it cost. Or it might be 13 I can't imagine. I can't. Well, I can't, I can't imagine what that video would be like. Um, one time, one day, we maybe will get her on here. Um, so, Mike, London. very quick. I've got a scoot. Oh no worries. All right, well, Christian, thank you very much for joining us. Um, so, I'll leave you to you... your dog I'd story. I'm how, what? How's my model? No, I'm saying I'll leave you to your dog story whilst I shoot. Oh, off. oh no worries. <laughs> but I just showed. I have actually got some paint on this. If anyone hasn't watched any of my previews before, or not previews, sorry, my live stream. Not bad though, you've got a colour on it. Yeah, I usually don't get any colours. And there was one point where I was talking with Christian for for an hour and had it over the paint pot. Um, yeah. no, it's awful. But anyway, thank you for joining us and I uh, hope you have a uh, great weekend coming up, mate.
That's all good. In fact, yeah, I'm going to be shooting on my thing now. So, all right. Well, everyone more, go more... check. Everyone... Is that live as well? Is it? Well, yeah, it will be. Yeah, because I've got 15 everyone minutes. Everyone go check it out. Himself. Once this video is finished, I want to make that very clear. Once this video <laughs> has finished, go check. No, I'm joking. Go check oh, out. Sorry, I've, I've got to go. Dice Saga is going to be live streaming soon. Uh, you know? I've heard that. Yeah. You know it. Like... You know it. Get... <laughs> Jack just I was going to say more, but won't. No. <laughs> So, well, I hope the video goes well and I'll check it out later. <laughs> Bullshit. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> better with the story. I like the video, I guarantee you that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It shows sport. You know, get us up in the algorithm. It's all good. All right. Yeah, nice good. one. Out. Take care, guys. You too, yeah. mate. Catch you later. Take care. Bye -bye. Right. So, we got rid of the deadwood. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, recording two videos in one day. Oh, legend, in my opinion. No, very good guy. Streaming two videos in one day. What is this? Yeah. Oh, I mean, there's, there's one person that I'm in chat with um, called uh, uh, Luke, and he does a uh, sinful gaming you might have heard of. Yeah. And he, like, and he dedicates a week, uh, no, sorry, not a, well, it seems like a week, but he dedicates a day a week, he says, to making videos. And that guy brings out a video like every day and like fair bloody play to him. I did that for a few months and poor, oh, not fun. Um, I but, remember I was in several of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, right, it, it wasn't even like, oh, do, do you want to fancy joining the uh, preview video tonight? It's just like, right, Luke. So tonight, uh, six. The time is going to be for the video. It's going to be a long oh, one. Um, <laughs> Honestly, so, back when there was I, like... I, hope, I hope yeah, I hope Yasmin doesn't mind because if she does, well, the channel kind of needs the video. So. <laughs> To be honest, I, d I don't mind. Yeah. It's kind of what to give me this punch. To get like, into the whole thing. Yeah. I, I know I sort of like asked you guys about how you all got into it, but I didn't have as quite a nice entry. Entry to Warhammer. What was it? Was that along the lines of, right, there's this guy called Aiden Nagash, and he requires a hell of a lot of my attention. So. No, no, my introduction to Warhammer actually began when I was like. Four years old back in 1996. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, um, we were in um, we we're in town, and I sort of like remember walking past the shop and seeing sort of like these really cool, pretty models, and I'm there going, oh, "I want to be able to paint them." Mm -hmm. And then a few years later, um, I'm pretty sure you'll have heard about heard about it. Some a big shopping center opened up called the White Rose Centre. It's at the upper end of the country. It was that... quite a well-known thing. I, throughout... I know the Ashford Outlet Centre. Oh, okay. It's in Kent. Yeah, but like we had people it's from London coming up to that thing. Um, <laughs> but there was like this massive shopping centre opening and mm -hmm. I went to it. I, I think I must have been about eight, nine years old at the time. And they had a, ga uh, a games workshop open up in there when it opened and oh, i walked cool. past it and went nope that's it i ran away from my mom and went into the shop it's <laughs> it had only been open like maybe a day and um it stunk <laughs> yeah, well uh, not surprise me <laughs> it stunk of men it stunk yep. of sweat and it stunk of the old smell of nerves <laughs> The old, well, I don't think it's changed. <laughs> um, I mean, that oh, yeah. shop has because it's no longer a Warhammer shop, but um, yeah, sort of like my initial introduction to oh, it was sort of like guys looking at me going, What is there a child and a female at that doing in a shop? Why is there, why is there a female here? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little bit like when people. I mean, I'll be honest, no one no one says this to me. But when people says to me, you know, Agent Gash, why does why you know there are not more girls who do Warhammer? It's along the lines of like, well, I can think of I don't want to stereotype, but I can think of a bunch of things that put people off in general. And smell mm -hmm. is a strong contender. And uh well like I saw I think I saw a Facebook post about the other day, sort of talking about, you know, oh you go into like a, a hobby store and sometimes oh the smell's a bit bad, and you know, it's not the staff member. Um and I think, and the post was like, or well, you know, it's it's a, you know the bo smell and all that sort of thing. And I think it was like the elephant in the room. It's like, no, I'm pretty sure if you tell someone that they need to have a shower and use deodorant, it fixes the problem. And I know that sounds very harsh, but at the same time, you're doing them a favour. Yeah. <laughs> well, sort of like that's something that I really liked about sort of like this time because I've got like my 
because this is like the third time of me trying to get into Warhammer, and I think this time it's actually going to stick. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so too. You can tell me Luke probably smells quite bad, doesn't he? I imagine that way. <laughs> Uh, he smells like a French in. man, so <laughs> there we go. See, like, w yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> being a Kent lad, he'd know <laughs> on a yeah. bad day the, 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 the breeze carries it over. <laughs> oh, we're, yeah, we're pretty, pretty good down here. Um, pretty good, <laughs> bit of a wall, it's generally the solution. Um, <laughs> you go, you go past the uh, the channel Make tunnel, the oh, yeah, sort of waff. <laughs> To quickly sum up my second time attempting to get in. Um, so the it, first time, the first time, did you run out of the store straight away? What happened? Um, well, kind of when I was sort of when like all these like all the gentlemen were there going, why is there a girl here? And like get, like just it was like walking into an old cowboy saloon when you walk in and they're there going, you don't belong here. Was, was it a little bit like in Harry Potter where the uh, Chamber of Secrets where Harry gets the name wrong for the fireplace and he goes Diagon Alley. Mm -hmm. And when he's stuck, you, you, uh, you are aware of this scene? Yes, yes. Yes, and he's walking through the streets and he doesn't really know where he is. And all the other people are like, oh, we can help you find your way back. It's like, no, leave me alone. That's what the scene was. Th th that would have been a little bit more welcoming. It was. <laughs> It was more like when Harry Potter walks into uh, the Leaky Cauldron for the first time and everyone just stops and goes, oh, you're Harry Potter, only oh, you're a girl. You're 50% of the population. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't exist here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So obviously I kind of like turned around and sort of like walked, like walked back to my mum who then reprimanded me for running away. But... <laughs> But I ran away and joined the circus. Yeah. Um, but then the next time it was, we were over, it was, an ex and I were over in Manchester and he'd come across the Games Workshop shop in Manchester. And he was like, oh, what's this? And I was like explaining to him what it was. because. Well, can, I, can I ask you a question? So I, 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 Luke will already have told you this, but I have a constant habit of interrupting people in their own stories because I want to feel part of it. <laughs> Um, can I ask? So, I'll be asking commentary, and I'm sure the chat will be asking this throughout the time. So, I'll just do them there, really. Okay. Um, when you had to explain to your ex, did you have to do the awkward thing that a lot of us feel like where you don't want to make you're trying to make it sound as least nerdy as possible? <laughs> go, oh, yes, yeah, so it's like this thing, it's like chess, but the cool kids do it, and I don't know, you can some weird people play at the models after. <laughs> No, actually, because my ex was a massive nerd as well. Like he, oh, well, that does like, help. he was he was already sort of like a a tabletop gamer because he used to play like Yu Gi Oh and Magic. Oh, what what a nerd, Jesus! Yeah, yeah, God, no, get right. that shit out of here. Yeah. I'm not having that shit here. But yeah, and sort of like he was like, oh, and then he kind of ran in there, and then and I quote, bought me a birthday present. Wow. Which he bought himself the Isle of Blood. Start collecting. start collecting box for fantasy you can have half of it is that what it was <laughs> yes that is exactly it oh i only wanted the skaven so you could have the high elves happy birthday happy birthday and merry christmas <laughs> Not it. and then it gets it gets even better i think is the best way to put this um, bearing in mind, I, I read the rules and so had he and so we started playing not floor hammer but bed hammer Yep. There was some space on the floor, so we just played it on the double bed that we I hear, I hear Slanesh enjoyed be bed hammer. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was good. Gonna... <laughs> so... Oh, we can't go away again. No, I've, I've heard the rules very like in Slanesh's favour in the bed hammer. But, um, so you played that? So we played that. But apparently, every time I told him about a rule, I was wrong. Oh, right. One of those. So he just... was one of those players. <laughs> was he like, I guess, well, I, well, I don't think that is how it works. Um, you say to him, and he goes, well, I say that is how it works. And, you know, you're a girl. So straight away. Yeah. <laughs> his yeah. his favourite line to use against me was, it's a tie and I decide all ties. So, so well, that, that is how democracy works, I believe. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> So I, I quickly fell out of luck, like even though I quite enjoyed the painting of the models and mm. sort of like we got quite excited about 
building high elf archers. <laughs> We've all been excited about building high elf archers. Poor, that takes yeah. a while. Don't talk to me about that. I've got an army list. I've got to do 40 of them. <laughs> um, I quickly fell out of love with it because nothing I did would ever win. So I was there going, well, it, if I don't have an even chance of winning, what is the point? Yeah. And I'm sorry, but even in fantasy, Skaven versus High Elves. The uh, High Elves should be winning. <laughs> yeah, so I'm hearing that it's mainly about yourself um not one of these games rather than the high elves <laughs> i'm hearing that it was him yeah. Um. <laughs> um, so yeah i stopped playing and then i i kind of forgot about warhammer until what <laughs> <laughs> yeah i completely forgot about so you forgot warhammer, about warhammer. Well, i mean well, I, had, I had Continue. university work i had real life i had various different tragedies happen to me and i'm just there going Ah, <laughs> and then I found Luke after all of this. <laughs> that was the biggest tragedy. Yes, that was the yeah. biggest tragedy. Oh, blimey, don't know. I've only known the guy for what? How long have I known you now, Luke? Two years. Yeah, I think it is like two. Wait, what, uh, wait, our first video was the Chaos Dwarf one. Yeah, hi, I, I, I look forward to you doing a Chaos Dwarf video. Oh, what, why do you reckon you look forward to it? Oh, because I've started collecting you play Chaos Dwarfs? Well, I don't know the game, but I'm sorry. Right, yep, yeah, that qualification, you're on the channel. Right, we'll get you set up with a mic and everything else. Right, so um, first question's coming up fast. That's basically how it How happens. do you play Chaos Dwarfs? Um... I actually remember the lead up to that video. I did. You were so excited. And I was doing all, <laughs> I was doing, like, all my research. <laughs> thank, thank God someone was. <laughs> he had, like, at least one or two notebooks on the go. <laughs> Me. Oh yeah. So, well, because I, you know, I hadn't. I'd only. I'd only recently just started watching your content and everything. Um. And it was just like, oh, you know, this. I, I'd never been in a YouTube video, and it was like to me, it was like this big thing. It's like, oh, yeah. And that age actually wanna... is like so amazing as well. Obviously, that was one of the things you were thinking. Yeah, I and I didn't want to let you down. No, I mean, well, you... not only. It, what? It's only a year ago. That's only a year. What? No. Uncover the dark it, no. No. Oh. Yeah. Are you watching my no. tribute video? No, it's an advert. No. Why play Legions of Asgore? Yeah. But why are we saying it's a year ago? According to, according to this, it's. Well, I've only known you for a year. Well, that's a shame. I thought it was way older than it was that. It's way older. It was pre-pandemic, that. Yeah. It says one year. Well, That's no, because nice. it might not be hitting two years, so you need to look to try and find the release date. But it would be more than two years, surely. That's why I'm questioning it, because this lot says two years. It's probably just ticked over to two years. Let's have a look. We'll, we'll do an Asian and Gash investigation to all this. Yeah, because yeah. I, I swear it's been longer than <laughs> long, much longer than a year. I was a YouTube creator once. I know how this works. Uh, I, there's a very simple, there's a very simple way to do this. I go to my playlist for uh, Chaos Dwarfs, which is incredibly short, and then we'll uh, find it that way. <laughs> oh, I'd go into the um, creation studio and look through all the videos because it gives you the dates. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a, there's a, we're talking a lot of videos here. Oh. We're talking. I've probably I've done over five hundred, probably over about five fifty. Wow! Yeah, I know. Wow. I know. What a good use of my time. <laughs> and mine. Well, genuinely, kind of yeah, because it was you, your videos, and Luke's excitement that actually got me back into Warhammer. So, used to me. Was it? Well, there you go. And um, I, I can tell you, like, my enthusiasm for every army is like up here, and my acting is. Fantastic. And what I will say is, uh, so looking at that video, it's the 1st of February 2020. So nearly two years ago. Oh, there we go. And that is so. Jasmine was right. That's why it says a year. But I swear. I thought that. it was 2019 we did that. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's always a chance that YouTube's wrong. Um, but that video's got 70 likes. So, you know, we'll take that. And yeah. yet, today is the only way I play Cursed Wolf video still going because the they're no longer a thing, are they? I was going to say, the models are gone. Yeah, um, but uh, I think someone put a comment on that at some point saying, like, um, 
what's the best way to start them? And I'm like, oh, sorry, they've been discontinued. <laughs> we can stop now, really. Sorry. Wait, wait for the wait new one. Come out in plastic, basically. Um, and then and the just come out in plastic. I'm starting a chaos army. That's it. And then going back to um, the chat as well, because um, I know Raymond's got a few things in. Uh, we have an award for um, uh, for him at our big convention. He was the AMS tournament organizer. Organization. Organize. Can't bloody speak to it. Organizer. Where does the Zation come from? I have no idea. Uh, from the <laughs> Crucible. So he was a big guy in an AOS uh, for Central Florida. That's very cool, man. Uh, and you definitely um, definitely learn a lot when you have a guy like that around as well. Yeah. And then uh, Raymond saying, uh, I tuned into your streams even after they are done. Watch them because I find the conversations entertaining. Well, I, I do try. And there's a very thin line between what can be monetized on YouTube and what can't be. But I do my <laughs> best to um, entertain how I can. Don't get any pain done, but I do my best to entertain. Um, so very glad to hear that. And um, I think I, I think what, what I spoke about with all the people we have on the channel, very genuine people. Um, and no more genuine than the chat themselves. So thank you very much. Um, I found We found out what the whole um, weird letters from earlier was. We've definitely got some sort of porn bot in the chat as well. So they're loving life. Um, Unless that's code for uh, Operation uh, Sea Kestrel has begun, and then go. <laughs> this is a battle, quite clearly. What's that? Ah, ah. This is a battle. Okay. Yes, yeah, this is a battle. Sorry, this is Age of Sigma channel. Oh, God. Age of Sigma. Come on. We're very yes. <laughs> oh, I don't even want to get into it. Um, <laughs> Uh, the Roman said, uh, so back in the day when I was in the middle school, back uh, in 95, the Warhammer players didn't have the uh, game of funk. That was the magic uh, the gathering players. So I think that is the smell, wasn't it? I think we mm. can say. Yeah, I mean, yeah. what I can say, at least with Warhammer, you're having to, you know, move around to engage some sort of physical activity. So you're already prepared. You've already got the uh, the deodorant on at that point. Um, but magic the gathering, you're not expecting to be sweating. So you're just sitting there making cards, aren't you? So that, I mean, have you ever played Magic the Gathering? Uh, no, but what I will say is um, when I was younger, I didn't play, but I did collect uh, something you might have heard of. It's called Pokemon cards, so <gasps> pretty, pretty much an expert. I have a huge, well, used to have a huge collection of Pokemon cards, and my Millie got Luke into playing the card game. Did it? Yeah. I forgot we have Pokemon yeah. cards. We actually have Pokemon cards still and still occasionally play it. We have not played it in such a long time. I know. <laughs> Too long. I, I've never played the game. Um, I just remember having the cards. Um, and I think that's a really good card. But, you know, times are hard once upon a time. all sold off. Um, so I don't have those anymore. But oh. I just got a very, like, I think I had, like, a rare Charizard or something. Mm. I accidentally traded my shiny Charizard for, like, I can't remember what, but. Not worth it. it Free magic worth it. beans. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was magic beans. I think it was just like this other Pokemon card that I was there going, oh, it's cute, I want it. Oh, no. Because I was like, I think I was 13. I was naive. I was. I was so naive. Oh. I know Charizard's one of the ones that we can't get hold of. I think we've, we've all learned from that, haven't we? I had a, uh, had a rare... Oh, what's the big sea monster called? The big, like, sea snake. Merida? The one that is, like, it's a stupid goldfish and it turns into the massive... Oh, Gyarados. Yeah, I had, like, a really rare one of those. That was really cool. Um, yeah, I did, like, it's weird, isn't it? Because, like, I haven't, like... I mean, I haven't seen or held a Pokemon card for... Pff, God knows how long. I didn't play Pokemon Go or anything. And, but... If you were to like see those cards again, it definitely does bring back memories, doesn't it? Like happy sort of. I don't know if it's the the, the nice colourful Pokemon or what what it works, or it's just the uh, very pleased, isn't it? Like I actually saw um, something on Instagram today, which was something I wouldn't buy. So um, I like Pokemon, but I wouldn't say I'm a huge Pokemon fan just because haven't really had haven't, haven't really had anything to do with it for like twelve years or something. Um, mm. But this uh, it was uh, an Instagram store or something, but they sold. Uh, like you know there's like display balls like snow globes mm. yeah like like that sort of size but without any water or any snow or anything just that sort of size of a diorama um mm. but inside is there's the shape of a pokeball and then the top half is see-through 
and there's a Pokemon in each one. And it's yeah. like a Pokemon in its natural environment. So, you know, like there'll be different basin and all that sort of thing. And that looked really cool. I thought like you could have like a, a shelf of those or something. That'd be awesome. They're like 30 quid each. <laughs> oh, are they? Yeah, well, I didn't actually click on the thing. Uh, yeah. Well, um, that is for the Asian Agash Pokemon channel that will be happening at some point. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll write, I can write it all for tax purposes. <laughs> well, you just need like a second channel that's Asian Agash Gaming and it just covers like. That, I'll, I'll be honest yeah. with you. I'll be honest with you. That's pretty much what this channel is these days. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty much like my hobby and what I can upload onto the internet. Yeah. Um, so if you want to see Pokemon stuff, let me know. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I remember, um, do you remember Yu-Gi-Oh? Oh, yes. I, I, you, I, I actually played in a, a, a professional oh, wow. top tier level Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. I was garbage. I couldn't play for anything like my deck was not meta tier or anything like that but i i, I went there. to one of these tournaments god like to be fair though you're, you're definitely more ahead of than what i was I remember when i had my pope my uh Yu -Gi -Oh, be like someone go like my deck wasn't top meta and i'm like huh deck what does that word mean <laughs> uh, <laughs> i i just remember in the playground going around people going like oh have you got blue eyes i'm like yeah i do have blue eyes and thinking that was the best joke going so i used to tell it for years um still do occasionally but um you know blue eyes because the blue eyes dragon yeah 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 do you have blue eyes yeah of course yeah got two of them well oh, that's it's not very funny yeah well I'll, I'll keep saying it to someone else <laughs> um so did that and then oh i tell you what though i had a really rare card i can't remember it was but it was some sort of black dragon but it was like really rare um oh, well, i don't know if it was really really rare but i knew like i was the only one at school that had one um and it was like pun I think it was like a, a one of the gods or something. I can't remember it. Oh. Slice but of the Sky Dragon. Is that the name of it? If it's a god dragon, it was Slice, slice of the Sky Dragon, but he was red. You, you know too much. <laughs> was it, was it, 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 might, it might, to be honest with you, it might have been red and then it had like a black background or something. Yeah, it did. Okay, yeah, that's probably it. But I remember we had a, uh, we used to carry our school stuff around in these like, um, they're called plimsoll cases or something yeah uh, yeah and then uh, i left one under a desk once though at the class i was at previous and then when i got it after class uh someone gone through it and stolen it annoyingly so <gasps> that's sad well they're nurgle brains yeah that, that's what i say that's what i say <laughs> uh, and then my, my mate gave me a blue eyes to make up for it, it was really nice but it wasn't wasn't the same I think I had about. I remember counting blue eyes. I think I had about seven, and I was literally counting them as if they were like twenty pound notes back in the day. Before <laughs> I'm rich, <laughs> like, um, and then sorry, just uh, going on back with the chat. Yeah. Uh, Rayman saying then check out Doom and Darkness channel. He has a video on that. Um, I so just going on to the next uh, chat as well. Things like he's uh, last two videos are spot on. Yeah, I actually sh um, I've watched them and I've shared his last one where I was talking about. Um, being embarrassed about you playing Warhammer, that's essentially what the video was. And that was uh, that was really good. I, I shared it because I, I watched that and he's just straight talking. And he's, um, I'll say I'm, a, I'm in a different place than him in the hobby, but I completely understand where he's coming from, where I, like compared to what I used to do, I've got so little time now for the hobby that I just, if, if I'm not in the hobby for fun, why am I even doing it? Because it's just, it, it's time I could use doing something I could enjoy. And I think where he's a bit more of that extreme where it's just like, I think he just sorted through quite a bit of stuff in his life. And like the hobby just came across just like, I'm not using anything in the hobby that I'm enjoying to chuck it away. Um, all that sort of thing, just spin down your hobby and all that stuff and just hit the uh, elephant in the room right on. He did. Um, and it's a, I, I do like, uh, uh, Michael, I think his name is from Doom Darkness. Uh, I think he's a very good guy. I think he's, well, a lot of this training is just very honest. Um, and they were very, uh, very agreeable with what you're saying because uh, some people don't. Um, I'd say not everyone agrees uh, with uh, with what you're saying because he's saying quite straight about um, what's the what's the best way to say it? Saying like um, looking at the hobby, hobby like you know seriously and like how it can have 
impact your life and how it can impact it for the worse. I know some people just absolutely love the hobby, but I think you took it in a very uh, realistic uh, setting. It's hard to explain unless you go and watch the video, but essentially... Yeah, I might have to go give that a listen. Yeah, it's, it's generally a good, good listen. Um, what was the... Uh, there was one thing I'd, I think I disagreed with him a little bit, though. It was... Um, uh, I think one thing he said was... I uh, slightly disagreed with this. He was saying, basically... People use the hobby as a distraction. Like you should be getting on with other things in your life, more important things, you know, sorting out tax returns, sorting out, you know, um, trying to get a better job, all these sorts of things, relationships, all that sort of stuff. And instead you're spending time on the hobby when you should be sorting out your real problems. So I, I agree with that, but I think people do also need the hobby to get away from that stuff yeah. to an extent. You can't always focus on that stuff. But yeah. I think you probably meant that as well. Um, but no, so... Generally, very good video, and I recommend everyone to watch it. And uh, it's up on my community tab on my channel. Um, if you're really on the channel, you just want to click that. Um, but yeah, very, very good. And he's he hadn't made a uh, Warhammer videos for a long time, so you can see he's definitely came back in. Like, this is uh, the content he's going to make is just going to be what, what he can make and uh, very much what he wants to rather than doing something that what a lot of YouTubers do. Uh, YouTubers do, and I've been guilty of it as well before. It's just making stuff that you think is going to be good and we'll get the views in and stuff yeah. and uh, content for the sake of content rather than content because it's actually what you you know what that, you well, want that's, to make. that's it and he said he said something very good um that if you're a youtuber you're um you'll fully uh, understand this and what he said was um you'll see some person making some i don't know not like I'm going to use some crude language here, and I don't mean it because people make good videos and stuff, but you're going to see one person make us a video that's generally not that great, that's a bit shit, but just because the title's catchy or something like that, or it's about news, you go, what the fuck is this person doing? You know, he's dragging his sort of um, quality through the mud just to get a few views and a few likes and all that sort of thing. And then you'll say that, but then you'll be doing exactly the same thing the next day about the news that just came out or something just to get the news in. And it's a little yeah. bit like this merry-go-round of trying to chase views and fight the YouTube algorithm and all that sort of thing. But I think you've got to, you've just got to do what you enjoy, really. You've got to understand yeah. that YouTube, for most people, it's never going to be a job or anything like that. So you've got to do it. And the same reason I say the hobby, if you don't enjoy it, there's no point doing it. Um, but yeah, but he, he explains it very well in his, uh, his videos. And what I'd say, though, when he was talking about the hobby and all that sort of thing, never hide it from people. But right? there's, there's no point. Like, and the worst thing is when you do try and hide it and stuff, and then like, um, if it comes out, you do um, collect and spend lots of money on plastic little toy soldiers and paint them up. <laughs> uh, then it's even more weird because you try to hide it for some reason. But, you know. Yeah. And... Uh, great Norton there. <laughs> yeah. And I think one of the things I'd say is... Uh, like it obviously depends on who you're talking to but like if you're explaining the hobby to someone you don't like explain everything just you know tell them what the actual hobby side of it is you know what you actually spend 90% of your time doing building painting and why you think it's really good and just relieves you from uh stress and all that because most people like being creative and like doing some sort of arts and craft activity most yeah. people enjoy it not even like oh what, what would you do for your hobby i, I like pottery and stuff but i just mean People, let's say you do, you meet up with the family or something like that, and you do some sort of fun activity, and it's something to do with art and crafts. Nine out of ten of you will enjoy that activity. Definitely. Um, yeah, exactly. So, and I mean, I think, uh, and one of the things he said in the video as well was, um, uh, he was talking about like uh, girls he dated or something over the last year, and he was saying like, and he told them he did the hobby, they didn't have a problem. Like, I can honestly tell you, like, I've obviously being quite a few dates and stuff myself well when, when i spoke to girls they generally the reaction obviously you know yeah is here as well um yes. the entirety of your gender um but what i would say is they generally find it pretty cool you know because it's because yeah. what it is, is if you can say um uh like you know when you talk about hobbies and all that sort of thing if you, if you just met someone and uh, doesn't you have to be on a date or something you just generally meet them um and you're uh, just having a conversation and stuff if you're the main thing is if you're passionate about something now it doesn't have to be like, oh, i'm really passionate about work to make as much money as possible to then somehow enjoy the money just before i die like if, if that's really what you want to do in life that's fair enough but if your passion sank like um so for me like oh, i'm very passionate about the gym or very passionate about uh warhammer 
and I always find that you have this conversation with someone, it works the reverse way where if they're really passionate about something, you can have an easy conversation with someone. Or if you're really passionate about something, they can have really easy, a really easy conversation with you. Um, and, that, and that's the same with Warhammer. And it's no different. And the reason why I bring all this up is because most people who play Warhammer or build and paint are pretty passionate about it. They're not really like, oh, I, I dabble in Warhammer. I dabble in tabletop gaming. I don't really know many dabblers. You're kind of all in. Yeah. Uh, with, with that but uh, that, that's that's basically my, my thoughts of this video whatever but go go check out uh, Doom darkness channel it's done yeah, a couple of great uh videos on that uh really um and then i'll just go to uh, uh raymond said as well uh my brother uh sold all of his uh all, all of my magic uh cards uh for weed about five years ago it was a bunch of alpha beta um ultimate through ice age um just alpha and beta lands were worth about um five to seven hundred pounds i believe that is um that's a yeah that would uh really really angry uh angry yeah. me um yeah i i, I don't know if you i uh, wouldn't be surprised i'm forgiving you brother about that uh and that that does suck uh, especially like i said like when well, my cards were stolen as well and it's just like it's not even like you haven't even it's not even your regret to say well i, well, I wish i didn't sell those it's like i had no choice and i've made no game from it um yeah so it's not not that right right, right. Well, we... i'm gonna have to scoot off as well no worries at all i think we'll call it there it's coming up to about two hours anyway to be fair yeah. um and, and it did start off going like how long do i can go on for oh an hour, an hour mate an hour tops we'll be fine <laughs> here we are um but what i will say guys if you have just joined um make sure if you like to obviously don't have to but if you want to uh go at the start of the video and there was me um luke uh yasmin and christian obviously all chatting away. And if you want to get onto your hobby, if you just got back to us, sit down. You can rewatch it. Don't worry. Um, and if you did join us, watching them through the video, thank you very much for doing that. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope one of us somehow managed to brighten up your day, and hopefully, no one made you feel massively depressed. Uh, that's one of our main goals here: is to make people feel less depressed, uh, which is uh, going quite well. I I think on that note. But uh, I, I hope you enjoyed the video, anyway, guys. Um, if you did, please do me something. Massively helps. Smash the like video. Um, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell notification. Free, easy clicks. If you haven't already done so, just hugely helps out the channel. It's absolutely free for you to do. So that'd be great. Um, if you know someone who enjoyed this video or they just want to hang out and do some painting, make sure you share it with them. And we also do have a Discord on the channel. Now, I always <laughs> have to say join the Discord because of this reason, that reason. There's loads of people there, and there is actually one of these people right here in front of us. So uh, Luke, why should people join the Discord? Bear in mind that you are a moderator and your review of being a moderator is underway. So uh, I don't know. If, if Yasmin had anything, it would be on why shouldn't you join me? Yeah. <laughs> so, she can, so she can have more time actually talking to me and that I'm not there <laughs> looking at my phone or on the Discord. Or whatever. Well, if I can actually chirp in. Yeah. Um, the amount of smiles that you get and the amount of funnies that are just discussed throughout that discord because like I, i'm in it but i don't have it on my phone i only have discord on my computer so i don't get the buzz buzz constantly <laughs> <All the time. laughs> yeah yeah i i muted the discord server for eight hours oh for the stream i was like i'm muting it otherwise <laughs> it's just gonna keep going off. um but there is lots of funny pictures shared there's lots of stories and you guys always seem to get really into sort of like like either like the backgrounds, the law, or sort of like talking about army lists and how it's quite constructive criticism and stuff as well. Yeah, so the, there's that side of it, but there's also just like it really is, and you know, I don't want to lean on the tropes that so many people talk about on YouTube, but it is very much a good community. Yeah, um, yeah. everyone on there is happy to help, give criticism, constructive criticism if people want it, but also just support anyone who's trying anything, you know. If you're wanting to talk about lists, there'll be people to talk about lists. If you want to play a game, there's usually someone kicking around. Apart from um, when you want to play a game. Apart from when I want to play a game. <laughs> if, yeah. you want to play a game. If, if you're wanting to, I don't know, do be of chaos, but you go, oh, I just don't really know if they're competitive enough, or he knows this. There's a guy called Ben who will fight to the death to prove to you <laughs> those armies are worth playing. Yeah, yeah. If you want your ear chewed off for five hours about Beast of Chaos, go poke Ben. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all very good yeah. i mean like the other thing as well is what i would say is like it's a nice community and it generally is because um like obviously i, I doubt anyone goes well oh, you can join my community but a bunch of ourselves but 
one would say is uh, generally not haven't really ever had to ban anyone from that community, and we're we're easily three fifty or something members now, aren't we? Probably more than that. Like, you know what? I, I've not checked in a while. Should, don't, should... don't say it's really embarrassing. Actually, we've lost a hundred in the last day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, 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 like it's just you and me. I, just, I don't know what you're saying. Everyone's just rage quit. <laughs> oh, oh, I had to tell everyone else. It's just fake accounts that came up to make myself not feel lonely. Oh, someone else messaged me on the phone. Better check that one out. But um, yeah, we must. Three hundred and forty members. Three hundred and forty members. So about that. Um, so yeah, it's it's a great community. And it's just just generally really welcoming. And there's I haven't had, had a chat with anyone, which is a which is great. And everyone sort of, yeah, I don't think there's ever been any problems. And uh, people play every army there. There's loads of advice. But anyway, so you want to join that, that's fine. Um, if you want to support the channel a step further, I have got a Patreon or a membership on YouTube. So what that means, you click the join button, that's the subscribe button. If anything for a pound to the channel, massive goes to support the channel. Or if you want to support me on Patreon, there's a link to my Patreon on top of the description down below. That's basically how I can keep the channel going. Everything else, as um, although I've been slowing down the videos now, like time while I'm doing this, I really should be revising or I should be basically cracking on with work. So this is still costing time, basically, for myself. Um, but what I will say is if you want to support that way, that would be amazing. Um, a massive thank you if you can. And a huge thank you to everyone who already does it. So I probably just haven't got your names up right now. But I know you all do an amazing job. Um, really, generally doesn't go unnoticed. And uh, when I have been coming back and making these videos, I know most of you have still been uh, supporting the channel. And that really does mean... A, uh, a huge amount to me so i know that wasn't just like um i'm just smashing out content all the time you know and support that way but knowing that when i'm not able to make as much content at the moment you guys are still going to support me so that makes a huge amount um of appreciation for me to you basically for that and if you um can't support the channel no worries we ask you like subscribe and press the bell button because that is free and share the video you'd like to and make sure you join the discord and what i will say with the discord mention is that um, if you're happy working on something throughout this video, join and share what you've been working on. So it's great to see it as well as hearing it from you guys. And with that, I'm going to thank you all for watching this video. I'm going to thank uh, Luke and Yasmin for joining me as well. As it's been a pleasure to talk to you both. Thank you. And um, it's been uh, it's been nice to catch up because we yeah. obviously haven't done one of these for a long time, have we? So yeah, it's been ages. Bloody, bloody too long. But it's a uh, it's been lovely spending an evening doing some Warhammer and talking about some Warhammer. So thank you all for that, and thank you to the chat as well for doing that and uh remember till next time guys to stay safe stay hygienic make sure you wear a mask if you have to and for god's sake wash your hands i mean i don't know how many times i've had to say this throughout the pandemic but if you don't wash your hands yet then clearly you're the reason why i can't go to my store to play 2000 point games War. guys remember till next time that no gash is all at all it's gone luke take away <laughs> <laughs> The gash is all, and all is one. In the gash. There we go. It wasn't that bloody hard, wasn't it? Right, guys, see you later. Stay safe and catch you soon. Bye. Bye.